There's a guy all in black, balaclava on, with a Mat 10 machine gun with the, st the stock out, and he's walking Another sideways. guy? Yeah, so the guy, he had a pistol. My brother's come out, shot at him. So as I'm like riding there, he's come out in the middle of the road. So I'm going across a patch of grass and he's walking, but he's walking sideways like that. And I thought, oh, this guy knows what he's doing. He's not holding it like the, sorry, yeah. he's not holding it like the movies. No. And he had his on you. He's on me and I'm riding with my bulletproof vest on my pedal bike like that. And in my mum's life, I've just gone, God, if this kid's going to shoot me, please let this kid shoot me in my lower body. He's lowered it and then he's let off the whole 30. Just like, Rap! Guys, today's podcast is in partnership with Stone & Co solicitors, experts in serious and complex criminal matters. If you have a criminal matter that you need help with or you've been arrested and want the best representation, contact the number below or drop them an email. All the information is on the screen below, as you can see. Stone & Co can offer specialist criminal defence services on a private basis or legal aid, so you don't pay nothing. And as a promotional offer, they're offering a case review in person or over the phone, free of charge, no obligation, no fees. And they'll take a look at your case, guys. Welcome to the Kicking Up Dust Media YouTube channel, guys. Today I've got a very special guest. The brother came from far away. Introduce yourself to the camera, bro. I'm from Matthew Norford. I'm from Manchester, Rush Home. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on your show today, brother. Tell me your name and your, what your street name was. Man Matthew Norford, my street name was Skelly for back in the day. It was Skeleton, Skelly for short. Um, I really appreciate the brother coming from a very long way. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me, bro. Manchester, they got the fast train nowadays, so <laughs> two hours, but it's a, lo a long journey, man. No, nah, but it was, thank you for the ticket. It was a smooth, it was a smooth ride. Smooth ride. That's cool, man. Uh, you know, you've got to appreciate the guests that come on the platform, you know? Yeah. You know, sometimes people think it's about the host, it's about the guest. Yeah. Because the guests are the ones making the effort coming down. Yeah, yeah. Because I've had people come from all over the UK. Yeah. Is that what I mean? It's, it's a journey, you know? It's a whole day out, basically. Yeah, it is. And whatever. But anyway, um, I saw a clip of your interview um, on the internet. So what I do, I don't uh, pre kind of plan any podcast. Yeah. Because you know we're from road, so it's you know we yeah, let yeah, it flow. Yeah. We know yeah. where the conversation is <laughs> going, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So I don't take no notes and stuff like that. But what I what I do do, I never watch the whole podcast. Okay. Because I want to be like a, a spectator. Yeah, yeah. With your answers, so I clocked. I say, yo, Brez rule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark yeah. him down, you know? Yeah, yeah. Boom, just <laughs> nice know what I mean. Exactly. So, like, a lot of your story, I personally don't know it. Yeah. I just heard a couple of bits and whatever. Yeah. And that's it. And I just cut it off. I said, look, I'll get him on and then we go from there. Yeah. What we like to do is go back to the beginning. Yeah. You know, where your parents originally were born, where they came from. Yeah. And where you grew up. Yeah. Dad's from Jamaica, Kingston. My mum was born over here, but her parents are from St. Kitts. Um, obviously, I'm born in Manchester. And I was born with five brothers and two sisters. An older brother, Gary, was two years older. Gary was my best friend, my dad, my brother, my soulmate. I love him more than my own life. He was always there for me. Um, and I've got an older sister, Ellen, who I love her to death. I love all my brothers and sisters, but my older siblings were uh, closer to me. Okay. And uh, when you were growing up, um, the area that you grew up in, what was it like? Rush home. Back in the 80s, I can remember it being mostly... Asian and black populated. You had a few white families there, but it was a community. Yeah, you had Wimslow Road, we all knew each other in this. I know it sounds like something my mum used to say, but you could leave your door open. Like my mum used to say in the 70s, oh, you could leave your door open and go to the shops. In the 80s, in my community, Rush Home, we all knew each other. So we could leave your door open. We all would play football, play Kirby together. Um, yeah, it was, it was for me, it was, a, it was a good upbringing because you had a community. It wasn't just like now where it's every household for themselves. You really knew all your neighbours. That's true. And that's how a lot of the areas were in the inner cities in yeah. the UK. Everyone knew each other. Yeah. I think it was a sense of security as well, wasn't it? Yeah. You understand? Um, uh, growing up, obviously, the area you came from became you know quite notorious South Manchester, right? Yeah. I'm going to get into that a bit uh, later on. Um, growing up, how was your behaviour as a kid from primary school going up into secondary school? Um, primary school, I was what you would call a class clown. So in school, I was the one that made everyone laugh. But at home, I was, uh, what's, the, what's the word I can look for? I was the odd one out. So I'd be the one that if my mum said, don't talk at night, and me and my brother got caught talking, I'd get the brunt of the beating. So my mum would come in and I'm laughing now, but as a kid, I wasn't laughing, I was screaming, but she'd be like, don't you talk, I told you to shut up. And she's hitting you with like, a metal pot spoon or a metal ladle, and then Gary should go over to Gary and go, and you too. So when I'm balling, like, 
ah! I'm thinking, you've just gave me a paragraph and gave him two words. Like, I always got, I got the brunt of it and... I was always told you're like your dad. And obviously, as you get a bit old, as you get in from, say, six to ten, you start seeing things and noticing things. I noticed my dad, you know, beat my mum. I noticed he was, he was a nasty person. He'd come, give you a tenner. And then by the time he walks out the door, oh, just give us that tenner back. I guess I need to get some cigarettes. I'll give you it next week. And then you wouldn't see him and you wouldn't see the money. Um, type of dad that you'd come on Christmas. My birthday is Christmas Day. And he'd come with nothing, with empty hands. Um, mum... I didn't feel loved off my mum. I felt like my mum actually beat me. I was getting blamed of everything. And I can remember just before I went to high school, I was depressed. I was thinking of suicide. Because just think of it, the woman who who gave you birth is beating you, but not beating the other two. Is saying you're like the dad, but they're like him. So when she meets her, um, someone she knows, oh yeah, they're your boys. Yeah, Matthew is like his dad. But these are like me. What does that do to a young person? When I know the guy's a piece of crap, and I'm, I used to walk around I'm thinking, believing you like yeah, story, yeah. But I used to think, am I like that? Am I going to beat up women? Am I going to be like my dad? And it, it mashes with your your mental. And I suppose, like you know, growing up like that, if you think violence is normal as well, getting beat up and whatever, whatnot. So um, you see, like that generation that we came from, yeah, like getting beats at home was quite normal. That was the way things were, I think, especially in the black and Asian community. Oh, yeah. All my black friends, and when I went to high school, I met Asian friends. Because in primary school, there wasn't no Asian guys. There was one Asian guy, and he kept himself to himself. But when I went to high school, and you get to know each other's culture, yeah. and you see them get beat, it's like, well, everyone gets beat like how yeah. I get beat, but no one doesn't get beat like that. It's just like, like you said, the black and Asian community yeah. and the culture back in the 80s and 90s, where Tough now... Love. Was it love? Because nah, that, 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 that metal on bone didn't feel like love. But, but, but they thought it was <laughs> yeah. love, you know? Yeah. You know, that's actually quite surprising that you were thinking about suicide at a young age. Yeah, so it was 100%. I remember, fast forward a bit, I was about 14 when I started messing with guns and I remember listening to Tupac and I was in the room, God's my witness, dark, had the gun to my head. At this time, I had bracelets, I had chain, I had money. Well, not, not, not money as I know money now, but 14-year-old kid and you got like four or five grand put down, mm, that's money that's to you. That's a lot of money. That's yeah. a lot of money. I'm listening to all this depressing music and I was just in the dark and I was just crying and about to pull the trigger. I'll never forget. I remember my mum and Gary downstairs laughing, watching Yo! MTV raps with Freddie and then I just playing the music and I thought, you know what, I'm going to end this. And then Gary came upstairs and took the gun off me. Like, turned around, what are you always doing? Listen to this depressing music in the dark and took the gun off me. So only two years later, I thought, why was I depressed? I had money, I had girls, I had a name, Skelly. Because the way my mum was treating me, when she's downstairs laughing with Gary, when I come downstairs and try and replicate it, she goes quiet like the plague's walked in. Oh, I so, neglected. Yeah, I felt neglected. I felt seriously. My brother went to school and a new pair had Nike Ratchet. I can remember the name. Like they were white and a bit of pink. I went to school looking like a homeless, homeless kid. I swear. I had... Why do you think that was? I think because I was always the kid that my, my mum would say, do the dishes. And if it was Gary's turn, I'd argue and say, but it's Gary's turn and I get battered for it. But when she'd say, Gary, do you want to do the dishes? Here, just do it. I'm a I, I'm a person where right is right is wrong wrong. If it's your turn, it's your turn. Mm. But because Gary's your favourite, and he tells you no, automatically now it's on me. And I'm like, no, it's Gary's turn. Then I get the beatings for it. But I was a kid that would get the beatings, run out the back door, play out with my friends, and get beat when I came back in. Because to me, right is right, wrong's wrong. Where my mum, she's like, he was just a bad kid, and now she understands it from my point of view that I wasn't a bad kid. I'm seeing it as you're making me do something that Gary's supposed to do, but because he's told you no, now you're forcing me. Mm. And how was your like behavior going into secondary school? Um, I'm still, I was still, I'm a my person. I am, I'm a funny guy, a laughy guy. I like to joke, get girls. I started playing basketball, but by the time I say I got to year eight, I started selling drugs. Um, how did you get into selling drugs at such a young age? Well, was twelve, right? Yeah. So my dad, um, I only knew this from Gary later. My dad used to give Gary a big quick save bag of brown sand obviously it was heroin but as a young seven eight year old boy when he's carrying it to my uncle my uncle was one of the biggest drug dealers in south money ace god rest his soul he would give him a big bag of cash and then so when gary got to say 11 12 high school he was already doing it so by the time i'm like yes yeah eight sorry i'm playing for basketball i'm playing for northwestern got um just mainly england boys but my mum's not coming to none of these games so when you turn around and your mum's not at these games but you're there for your son. Someone's there for his... Someone's got someone representing him, but I'm the best in the country and I ain't got no one representing me. And then you go home and tell mum, oh, mum, I've got a trophy. And she's like, yeah, 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 yeah. 
that kind of breaks a kid's heart. So it's for, I might as well make Gary proud. So then I just started chilling with Gary, with the older lads that would give me money to go shop, get, you know, started off young, doing the shop thing. Then I started selling a bit of weed. Then I started selling heroin and crap with Gary. And then I started carrying guns while maintaining to play basketball, but then got kicked out of school. Um, yeah, it was to, for, for me, it was to make Gary proud because the woman I'm trying to make proud, I'm doing basketball, I'm doing everything and right. It's not helping. And it's not helping. So I'm thinking I might as well give Gary love because Gary's might as well make Gary happy because Gary gives me love. And I'm thinking as a young kid, well, Gary's a gangster. He wants me to be a gangster. How many years older is he than you? Two years. He's two years older than you. Yeah. So when you're selling drugs, you're like heroin and crack. Yeah. And like what in pebbles, but you're pebbling. Yeah, 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 yeah. And how was that on the road? Like, you know, like, because you, you know, crackers if I rob you. Yeah, oh yeah, I've had it where they've chased me with needles. I've had it where they've jumped out of the vans and chasing you. But nine times out of ten, because you're young and you're immature, you think it's because um, of rappers. And we were watching, like these kids watch the drill movies and um, like Shy Will Story and Top Boy. We were watching Men in Society. America's yeah, we were watching all the American stuff. So we were imitating that. So you think it, it's glamorous. You think I'm a gangster. Mm -hmm. You don't know about the drug dealers are robbing the old lady's handbags on the Monday morning after she's been to the post office to get a bag. You don't know that they're robbing people's houses. People are getting traumatised through them to get the money to buy drugs off you. You don't care about all that. You just care about, I look like a gangster. I'm doing what a gangster should be doing. And sometimes it is scary, like when the police raid your house or where other men are trying to chase you down because you're in their area selling drugs. Like, yeah, it gets scary. It is scary, but people glamorise it and minimise like, the trauma that comes around it. And... Uh when you were actually out on the road selling drugs, when was the first time you got arrested? First time I got arrested for selling drugs was... For anything, really? Oh, for anything. It was battering the neighbour. The neighbour was a knob and he, he tried to run over my little brother. He ran me over my bike. So I've got a brother who's... He was Gooch. His uncle came with some of the Gooch boys and me and my brother and them Gooch boys, we absolutely battered him. And then we got arrested and we got put on... Um, it was an order where every Saturday we had to go to this community centre and listen to someone yeah. talk talk and do a bit of work. How old were you? 13, 14. Okay. First time. And we used to, I can remember because we were on the Mongoose GT. Um, I had a Mongoose and he had a GT um, BMX when they first come out with the stump pegs. So we used to blow yeah. to there and that, but we wanted to get back to serve the shots because we had our phones on us. Okay. Um, but yeah, I was pretty young. And when you were selling drugs, did your mum know? Yeah. She never had an issue with it? Yeah, she had an issue, but at the same time, I'm just being honest. A lot of parents will say, I didn't know what my son did, but I'm coming in with bracelets. Your son's coming in with bracelets. He's driving cars. Your son should be in school. Um, at 13 or 14, Gary brought my mum a hot point washing machine and I brought the hot point dryer. So she knew what we was doing. She's caught us. Sometimes when she busts open your bedroom door and she sees us bagging up, and she'd always say, get rid of it, I'll flush it down the toilet. But at the same time, she would accept the gifts. Yes, yeah. Because, being honest, she needed it because yeah, needed it, yeah. dad wasn't stepping up. So when you're saying, hey, our mum, there's a sky bill, there's a phone bill money, there's money for the uh, my kids, sorry, our brothers get back to, you know, going back to school. They had night trainers, they had took pressure off your mum and then you feel like a man because you're doing what a man should be doing. When really, I understand that the mum should have said no, but wh how can she stop us? What, throw the drugs down the toilet? Just go out and get more drugs. You're not going to stop now. Not going to stop. I was in, by then you feel you're in too deep and you, you're making hundreds a day. End of the week, you're probably walking away with what? At that age, a grand. That's a lot of money at 13, 14. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. It especially, is. And especially in the 90s. 90s, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lot of money. Um, how soon after the violence start like getting serious? I'm going to say when I was about 13, 14, they shot a guy from Rush Home, a Mossad gang shot um, one of the oldest from Rush Home. So then we had a meeting, got guns, went to Mossad looking for him and then just went back and forth from then. So I'll say from 13, 14, no later than 14, getting in beef. And it wasn't enough to do with me. It was one of the older ones. And none of the older ones backed it anyway. They all got off. Mm. So, um, yeah, from early. But then you see it with your dad battering your mum, when you're going under the estate at night time and you're hearing what you think is fireworks and it's gunshots or you're seeing people running, you just, you kind of get the the picture as you're growing up. So when you start doing it, oh, I remember he used to do it, my dad used to do it, my uncle used to do it, my friend's dad used to do it. Everyone, what you thought you, in the community used to do it, it was, only a, it was only a small minority, but you think it's the majority because you're young and you don't really see things. And it's like a natural progression now, isn't it? Yeah, it's just a natural progression. You start selling weed, then you start selling heroin and crack. That's where the big money is. Um, and then if you're lucky enough and you don't get someone who hates on you, they'll start selling your ounces. Then you can get, you know, your ounces, your four and a half. Mm. But our uncle always held us down. Because okay. when we're going to him saying, yo, we want a nine bar now, he knows, well, 
they've got money to buy a nine bar out and do it out. They're going to make this much. Oh, no, I can only give you an ounce. And that's your uncle who got you into it, but he wants to keep, keep you, you down because you'll yeah, go yeah. past him. That's right, yeah. And that's family. <laughs> that's how the game is. That's, no, but it's supposed, family's supposed yeah. to be supposed to be more than money in the game. You're supposed to look after your nephews, not get them into drug dealing and then rip them off at the same time, but... That's, that's, the game's scandalous. Yeah, the it? game is scandalous. There's no rules to it. Just, there's no rules. It's made up as you go along. Yes. And whatever. So, you know, you know the progression on the road, beef's kicking up or whatever. Yeah. But the beef was not directly with you. You're getting involved with somebody else's beef. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but now you're target now, isn't it? Yeah. And whatever. It was scary. But like I say, when you, I'm 13, 14, 15, sat around, I'm shooting at people, carrying guns, um, shot this guy, went to shoot with his knee, just missed his kneecap, then ran at him. It was a deuce, deuce, still enjoy the snap and caps and I'm at his chest clicking it. Just for the viewers, that's a 22, right? Yeah, it's a 22. Two shot. Snap and cap, yeah. Two shot, isn't it? Barrel like that. And um, so you snap it, you put two in. I almost, almost only had one. So when I went to shoot him in his knee, it's gone through his knee. He's seen the little hole, he's gone, oh, it's a real gun. and started trying to like protect himself. So I ran up and God's mate just went, Kh. so I'm like, Kh, Kh, Kh. so I ran off, snapped it open, it was only one bullet. So I was like, thank God. Because I found out that twenty twos go from close range can pierce you, but they haven't got enough power to get out the back, so they start bouncing around your bones and can hit Mesh organs. Up, yeah. So thank God, because you know how many kids ran off and told their mums what just happened, and you think that no one would grasp on you. A lot of people of grasped. Course, just thank God that none of them phoned the police because it wasn't really seriously hurt. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then I had a fight with him, having gang fights, and I'm all all the while I'm lying to the younger ones. Yeah, man just did this, man did that. But when you're at home and the weed and the alcohol's off, you're thinking, yo. Power if he dies or if I did this if the police come here I'm looking at 20 years and you know but you don't tell the youngsters that in the morning mm. you come out yeah firm that my man rare, rare, whatever <laughs> it's fake <laughs> that's exactly it's a barado isn't yeah. it you've you got to keep up you the keep it up. but it hurts you and in the long run and um, as, you're, as you're growing up when was the first time you went to prison 16 what was it, what was it for um, intense supply class A drugs mainly heroin a bit of coke crack cocaine but mainly heroin so that was at 96 no, 99. I'm born in 82. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, that's 99. Yeah, yeah. How long did you get? 15 months in Stokey for Young Offenders. That's a hot minute for... Uh, and I ain't going to lie. I listen to all the older the older ones, your prisons like this, you know, they come out, wham, I'm doing gym in there, yo, you have a laugh. So I'm like, yo, jail's nothing. Yo, when I went into that jail, that sweat box, and they let you out, and you go into the wing and you're seeing juveniles who are big been in there for years you got the 21 year olds just looking at you some of them look like stone cold killers and these guys could be could be weapons but you're walking and let's, let's be honest don't care how bad you are your heart's mm. pounding like that my face didn't show it but inside my heart's like that and he had a few fights i didn't win them all but that taught me about heart it's not about you ain't got your gun now you ain't got a knife unless you're gonna sharpen one ain't no one doing that in the, the young juveniles mm. back then so you had to learn to use these and the first time I got punched in my mouth and seen stars, like that taught me, yo, learn how to fight. Seriously. Um, serious in the in the shower, having an argument with a guy. He dissed my, my I had a son then, Malachi one. He this guy dissed my son, but um this guy come from a jail, he was ripped up, he was a uh, majority. So I dissed his um his sister, and I think his sister was disabled. Yeah. Obviously, I wouldn't do that now, but as a young kid, you're dissing my son. Yeah. All the man them are at the window egging it on, nah. So obviously I dissed his disabled sister. Obviously, he took that to heart, so we got in a shower. We're both next to each other, naked showering, you know. Put our boxes on and our um, prison clothes. We're in this little cubicle. Oh, I'm 16, fresh off road. I'm a gangster. Gangsters do all that talking shite. Yeah, um, so I went, right, what are you saying? He's just gone, bang! When I say I see stars, and I had to kill up like that, and my man's just blowing, trading blows. So then, obviously, I've come around, I've pushed him, I've banged him, and I've got a sharp knuckle, so I bust his lip. My man's just giving me a left to the temple. My brain was rattling. And obviously the screws have come so like we broke it up and as we're walking upstairs like yeah you got the best of me i'm like nah trust me you got the best of me he's like nah look at my lip bus there's nothing wrong with you when i got in my pad and lie down on my bed my brain said one more you would have been out of there so that taught me shut your mouth and just fight well, but you're not the hardest being a gunman doesn't mean you can fight it's all about your heart and hmm. um, we've got my gcse's I started playing basketball what, in prison? yeah 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 awesome. i've never been stupid i might make stupid decisions but I know you've got at one point you've got to get a job. Even if you start your own business, you need some degrees. Mm -hmm, so yeah. I just got my English and maths. I played basketball. I had a scholar, um, a chance to play basketball when I got out. But I always say the honest reason why I didn't take the opportunity. Growing up, um, my mum and my nana, like my nana was in the riots, and my mum's um, seen racism and experienced it. My mum always said, um, "I'm a." 
no, no. Like the white people are, um, are your enemies. You know, they, they want to keep you down, rare, rare. Now, as a young kid. So you believe it? Believe it. Your mum's telling you, no, no. You're watching films like American History X when he puts mm. the white, the black guy's mouth on the curb. Yeah. You're watching uh, Malcolm X. You're watching Black Panthers. So you're like, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, yeah, they don't care about me. The police are locking me up. Social services uh, and probation are getting involved. So I'm using that as an excuse, not saying that, well, police are locking you up because you're committing crime, you muppet. Probation are trying to put you on courses because you're 16, just coming, 17 coming out of jail. Mm. I'm looking at what my mum said to fit my narrative. I just want to, I want to sell drugs, the white man's against me. Then when you get older, you think, ain't no white guy ever shot after me. <laughs> ain't no white guy ever, like, give me drugs. Ain't a white guy chase me down or try to, you know, kill me. It's been a black guy that's did that. You know, when we were, when we were young, like... You would always blame like racism for getting yeah, pulled yeah. over. <laughs> you've like got four brains in a car, like hoods on and whatever, like and you wonder why you get pulled over selling drugs, you know. It's just like a excuse really, isn't it? You like you you, you wanna believe it. Yeah, yeah, you wanna believe it's it. Yeah. You only put me over because I'm black. Like you said, you got four guys, four guys in the car, they've all got ballets on. You can clearly smell weed and smoke coming out the window. No, exactly. But yeah. it's pulling you because you're black. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's that's that's, that's the mentality of, of a kid. Isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. What I mean, so you never you never actually finished your GCSE at school. You were kicked out, yeah. Yeah, I got kicked out. Uh, year nine. For what? Uh, bullying kids. So I used to at the dinner queue. I used to go to the front of the queue and say, "Yo, do you want me over a place?" Right. Take him there. Take a pound of him. Move him up two places, and then go to the ice cream van, and then say, "Yo, buy me this. Buy me that." And it wasn't trying to be a bad man, it's because these guys had. Do you know, like, so back in my school, Burnish High School, it was highly populated. Um, Asians, Somalians, a few white, black, like black, what you all call it, Caribbean or British, we were the minority. So when you're going to dinner queue and all the Asian guys I knew, they're turning up with pencil cases, with the full set. They've got £10, no dinner card, I've got a dinner ticket yeah, worth one twenty five. when you're yeah, getting yeah. a pizza, slice of pizza, chips, beans and a Calypso drink and you might be able to get a little jam art biscuit. That, yeah. Now that hurts. When you're pulling out your pen and your ruler and your rubber from your top pocket. <laughs> so when you're, and you're supposed to be this bad man in your area. Yeah, yeah. So when you go to the ice cream van and you've got no money, money it yeah. hurts. So it turns you into the bully because you just want to have what they've what got. they have, yeah, so you're taking and, it. Yeah, and then you start hating. And then you see a man doing cricket, you want to take man's cricket back and become a bully. So the school had enough and was like, nah, you have to get out. Get out. But it still let me play basketball because we were winning trophies after trophies. Okay. I still loved basketball because it was, when I'm going there, you're clapping. Yes, Matthew. It feels good. It feels good. But when I'm yeah. not playing basketball, I'm at home. It doesn't feel getting good. Getting abused by my mum. I'm getting, she's saying this, she's saying that. You've got people chasing you down. So basketball was kind of an escape. You know, people want recognition. Yeah, 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 yeah. No matter if you're a basketball or you're on road or whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. If someone like, you know, gives you recognition, it, it makes you feel happy. Yeah, and it that, motivates yeah, you. Yeah, it, it does that good feeling. A, I know it's in a bad way, but you know, in a romance, oh, he's a bad man. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. It, <laughs> that makes you worse, yeah. though. But you know what I mean? Yeah, no, you're 100% true because when Gary would say, yeah, yeah, you did your thing, G. <laughs> that sense of, yo, I'm a G, a real gangster's telling me that, yo, okay. I'm going to do that again. <laughs> like you say, you instead exactly of taking it. it the, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's always like that. Yeah, you know what I mean, so. Um, oh, but it's, it's a good thing though you don't need GCSEs yeah, in yeah. prison you don't really get that I, I don't think I've met anyone who don't need GCSEs <clears throat> in prison because I wanted to at least be able to give myself a chance when I come out of this life and I wanted to get out of my cell so education was a key to get out of my cell and instead mm -hmm. of sitting in a class talking to a man I thought I might as well just do it I'm only here for nine months I might as well just come out with something I've always been that type of thinker where make a good thing out of a bad situation people will mm -hmm. sit down in jail and moan I sit down and think well you've been caught you're here for however long you're here. What you do, moan or let's go and get a job, meet people, try and make some links, just make your time that, go as smooth as possible. That is the best attitude in prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no point sitting there sulking. Yeah. Just kind of just understand this is home now. Yeah. And just chill. Yeah. Just yeah. Do whatever makes you kind of comfortable, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, whether it's education, working or whatever, yeah. whatnot, you understand? So that was the right thing to do. So when you've come out of there now, what, you're what, 17 now? Yeah. So what's the plan? I ain't gonna lie, I was to get right back in because at this time now, me and Gary's running Rush Home. So we're beefing with a gang in Moss Side called Dodden at the time and Long Sight at the time. So I'm just getting back out to make Gary proud. I'm going back out with the gun now. We've got more younger members. So we're riding around in cars, um, chasing members down there, chasing us. I was only out for 12 months. And in that 12 months, a gang shot my uncle. And my uncle's from London, from Horror on the Hill, Harsden. He's not a gang member. He worked in Foot Locker. He's a straight civilian. But they shot him trying to rob him 
um, because he was related to us. And this is from his own mouth, what they said. Side. Yeah, Moss side. So then when we got the call to go to the um, the hospital, my mum's a nurse, see my mum crying, seeing the bullet hole in his stomach and the doctor seeing his injuries. So we went home, picked up two guns, picked up one of the younger members, drove around my side, chased his kid and shot, shot somebody in retaliation. Then there were shootings back and forth. And then police raided my house and the mother of my son's house and they found like drugs, um, bullets for a machine gun, money, bulletproof vests, um, some weed, some jewellery. And this is probably one of the only thing not one, but it's one of the only things I'll, I'll say I, I regret. She went to jail. She got two years in prison for some of the, the stuff to found out at her house. And I ended up getting four and a half years for the stuff to found in my mum's house. Now, I should have been a man and took her charge. But because we both fell out and, you know, I believe she cheated on me. So my, my young, immature mind was like, you can go to jail for that, for what you've done. And mm -hmm. obviously you spent some more money. Like, I think it was like 10 grand in nine months when I was locked up. So I let her go to jail for it when I should have took it. Um, she did a year in style women's prison and got out. Uh, I did two year, three months, went to Hindley prison, then went to Thorn Cross prison and then got out from an open prison. Um, prison for me was, it's mentally challenging. Yeah. Anyone can fight. Anyone can talk rubbish, but if you're trying to get your mind together, them lonely nights when your conscience comes to kick your, get you, and you, like you're saying, you're sitting there thinking, well, I'm getting out, what's your plan? This is, and you're thinking, Got to get back out, sell drugs, the same thing, man. What'll kill me? It's daunting, it really does get to you. When, when your uncle got shot, the guy you lot went and shot back, did he even have anything to do with it? Or was he no, just... he's part of the gang, but he wouldn't want to shoot off. Obviously, you know, it's like if I can't did get you. Did you know who the shooter was? Yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, I'm not going to say his name, but yeah, of course. he's an active guy. He's, all due respect, he's, he was about his thing. Um, yeah. And what did they take off him? They tried to um, took his bracelet off him. His bracelet was about. He worked at Foot Locker, so you know a working man ain't gonna have the biggest chaps. Mm. Probably three, four, five hundred quid tops. tops yeah. But you know on the road, these young kids think that the guys with the guns have money. No, we're broke. We're trying we're doing street robberies. Mm. And we're not going for civilians, yeah. We're going for someone that yeah looks like us, who dresses like us. But what are you gonna get out of that four hundred pound chaps? You're gonna probably get a one or one fifty tops. If that, that. man's putting wearing a floss with it. <laughs> right, right then. But now you've just done that and now you've just war behind it. Mm. So You've gone prison like in a short time. In that short time, anyone trying to get you back for, for what you were doing? Oh yeah, I've had people chase me down with guns and at that at that period though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like got to give it and and long sight. They were on it. Like people always tried to go on like the gangs they were going at were muppets. Now they're not because mm. obviously I tell you later on I've been shot and they weren't muppets. So if, mm. Obviously, if you beef with someone they're muppets, you'd, you'd you'd clear them out. They were on their thing just like we were on their thing. So, so for the viewers, tell how far apart is um, Russia from Mossad and Longsight? <laughs> so, let's just say you got this is Russia here. You can ride down one street called Great Western Street for on a mountain bike four minutes, and you cross a street called Lloyd Street. You're into Mossad, so a street separates us. Russia to Longsight is probably a bit further about on a bike five ten minutes. But it's still just one road. You go down another long road and long go across this road here. There's long sides, so we're in the middle. Mm. And we had to be more, what's the word, on it because they had big numbers. Dodden had big numbers, long side had big numbers. We had 10. So when we're going to jail, it's me on my own. When we're going to court, there's me and the next man coming to court. Okay. Man are going to court five, six, seven, eight deep. So you've got to have heart, you've got to have that. Yeah, then when I clicked up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was, it was, the shoe's not always on your foot, I tell young people, the shoe's not always on your foot. When you, when, when you went to prison the second time, um, like obviously now you've got enemies. Yeah, yeah, Are yeah. Are you yeah, bumping yeah. into them in the system yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen, because that was Hindley Prison, oh, that was one of the worst prisons, that M1 walkway. It's a long walkway where, <laughs> if you're going to see anyone, you see them on that walkway. You can stay in PC, protective custody, that's America, so you can stay you in What's it called over here? Yeah, go in the numbers. You can, you can, um, oh, I forgot to say because I've been out so long, but you can go on the behind the door and stay there. Yeah. Um, otherwise, that's your street cred gone. So I went there, seen a guy who shot, was supposedly the one that shot my uncle. I'm saying, come off your wing. They'll come off your wing. I'll smash your face in. And my man's like telling other guys around me, yo, smash his head in, do him. And I'm like, him? Yeah. No, no one can't do me nothing in this jail. You're like, you know, when, you, cause when you, you, you're in the thick of it and you now I'm roasting it. You've got to put the persona on. Yeah. I'm not bothered. Yeah. Yo, these men could rush me, but yo, I'm going to fight. Fight, yeah, um, It's just, like you say, most of it's bravado and, and you're lies. You're still youth offenders at this time, isn't it? Yeah, I was 18 when I got locked up, so I did just come out just before my 21st. So you've done two and a half years, but two yeah. or three months. Long. How many prisons did you do on that sentence? 
Uh, the second one, Hindley, and Hatfield did two. The first one I did, Stoke Keith just one. Then the third one I did. Six prisons. Yeah, six jails. Yeah. And you got your parole though? On the second one, got my parole. That's because I know how to talk. Yeah. I know what to say and what not to say. So on parole, Blended. I'm like, yeah, I miss my son. My son was not like I would have been three to the four. I'm like, yeah, I miss my son. He's two years out of his life. Rare all that. I'm sorry. Rare And in my mind, I'm thinking, that's what I'll go out and shoot someone. I was what I see my brother G. I'm cause have it. Gary was everything to me. And because beef is kicking up on the road while you're... It's really escalating. It's still, it's, it's still going, but it's calmed down. And one thing I noticed when I got out, everyone was like, yo, Skelly's back out. Because obviously the younger ones now are growing up now. But obviously me and my brother are at the top. So one time I was in a, a chilling and my brother's got a 45. I'm going to say name. He, when he's listening to this, he knows who he is. He's got the 45 revolver on him. Oh, was it the 44? One of them. And um, standing there and there's a car coming in. We live in a cul-de-sac and it's called The Grove. And the car's parked up and a, a guy's got out there with a big chain and he's talking to my brethren, um, TJ. So um, I'm, my brethren's gone, yo, my man's some of them who grassed up um, KH, that's my brother, um, Hassan, who's done Life Is Out now, and grassed up Gary. So I'm like, yo, I've just got out, I'm on parole, yo, you got the ting? He's like, yeah. I'm like, well, sort it. My man throws up, so I'm like, pass the ting, no gloves, grab the ting, walked over, leaned in the car like that, and also got the ting, the guy's just gone white, it was dark as night, but he's just gone white, gone, yo, you grass on my brother? He's gone, nah, 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 I said, yeah, you did, I said, one minute, I'm going to phone him now, Gary loved to sleep, God, Gary loved to sleep in the um, daytime, so I phoned him, he's like, what are you saying, bro? I'm like, yo, bro, I'm, I'm here with such and such from uh, Mount Road, and he's gone, no, he's picked up, he's gone, yeah, he's gone, yeah, I've got him here, I've got the ting, yo, so to light him up, he's gone, yo, give him the phone. And my mum's life, the guy, God's my witness, he's going to see the guy going, yeah, 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 yeah. Give me the phone, so what am I doing? He's like, nah, allow him. He's like, nah, forget that, bro, about allowing you. I'll light him up now. He's like, yo, bro, I told you, leave it alone. I put the phone down. Now, Gary's like, I say, my dad, when he says leave it, even though I'm, I want to, you've got to leave it. You gotta leave it. It's not worth him, because Gary would shoot you. Brother, <laughs> I'm not here to tell you, he'll shoot you in your ass. He would, and that's, that's don't teach disrespect him, teach you a lesson. So I left it. And obviously Dave got off and I'm like, why why you when he come around? I said, why you tell him to leave it? He said, no, nah, my mum was the only one in grass. I really believe, because at this point Gary's killed someone. Paid him. He no, I believe Gary didn't want me to take a soul. Because he knows how it is. Gary told me well, when I killed such and such, God rest his soul. He said, That vision never leaves your head. Even when you wake up, when you're sleeping, when you're thinking, I see my man's my man's vision of the guy I took. So if you're gonna kill someone, just know what you're gonna go through. Mm -hmm. So I think Remember, he loved me that much, but like soulmates. He's looking you, out for you, basically. Yeah. Do you really want your brother to go through what you know? And Gary taught me about God. So mm. he knows, yeah, I'm going to have to answer to God for this. And I'm doing all this, not because I want to, because to keep you safe and I love you. I, I had basketball, I had three opportunities to play it. Every time I turn mm. it down, because love is better than money. This guy who gave me a hug when my mum was battering me, this guy who gave me some of his food mm. when my mum was nasty to me, this guy when I'm beefing with olders, you just know your brother's got you. Yeah, yeah he's got you in it. So it was, all for, it was all for him. That's good that you appreciate those still. You see, um, you're, you're, you're like 21 now. You're kind yeah. of considered senior now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> That's the age you yeah. kind of like, you think you're a big man now, you know? You're 21. Yeah. So, you know, what, like, you know, did you ever think like, okay, you know what, I need to get some bread out here and stop this? Because obviously the beef, you know, can I ask you something? Sorry, just yeah. backtrack. You see the, the gunplay that started in Manchester where yeah. you got the nickname Gunchester. Gunchester. Was that started by your era or the one before it? Oh, our era. It wasn't the 80s because the 80s there weren't too many shootings. They were making money. Their man were killing it. I remember mm. my uncle in the Moss Side precinct in the bookies. Their man were killing it. And yeah, there was a shooting here, shooting there. But the 90s, that's what kicked off Gunchester because remember you had the Bloods and Crips. We were all imitating that. You had the explode of gangster rap. So a menace society, Boys in the Hood, all that came in the 90s. And that's when all the shootings came up. So, yeah, it was definitely... When I say my error, I put my error in. I'm 40. I say anything from 40. And the guys now will be around 50, 52. That, that's what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Then anything older than that, you so, old heads. So from the 90s, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Early, yeah, early yeah. 90s, it started. Yeah, it? yeah. That was a famous name, Gunchester. Yeah, yeah. I was reading in the, in, in, in the book. So what happened one time, um, I must have been in the shop. Yeah. And we were kind of always in the kind of like a trap yard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We spent a lot of time in the, you know how it was, you know, yeah, I was yeah. playing computer and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So I brought a book one day, I saw a book in the shop, it was called um, Gang War. Yeah. I, I still remember the author's name, I think it's Peter Walsh. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the guy's name, you know. I've read it. So obviously, man, everyone's playing computer. I, I, this is, I'm not really a computer guy. 
you know? Yeah. So, you know, they've got like a big 50, 60 inch TV in the thing and everyone's playing there waiting for yeah. the customers to call. Yeah, yeah. And we're young, innit? We're kids, yeah. you know? So I said, well, let me get this book, man. So I was looking at me, what are you doing? <laughs> Reading a book, you know? Because no one read books. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I said, now yeah. we'll read this. Bro, I read the book and the book kind of gassed me up. <laughs> Bro, it was just bare gunplay, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And whatever. And it was crazy. And I was even reading the, the part when, you know, Paddy Ashdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He went to, was it Moss Side? Yeah, I think yeah. it was Moss Side. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He yeah. To, and he was an MP, right? Yeah, he yeah, went, yeah. And the man just pulled out a big machine and said, you'll come out of my area and whatever. No, when you say gassed up, when, when you, I read the book and then you hear it on the news, gunshots, that's how warped your mind gets. I'm like, remember saying to my brother, Yo, we're, part, we're part of the reason why it's got that name. Because obviously we're contributing to the gun crime. Think how stupid that That's is. crazy, isn't it? I'm part of the reason that where our kids are growing up is called Gunchester. That's how, but I did like you say, it gassed me up like, yeah. You know, you get the most stupidest ideas when you're young. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I, was, when I was a youth offenders, I read that, I read the, you know, Monster Cody. Yeah, bro, H.A. H. H. Gangster. Hey, bro, bro I've read that hey, eight million times. He, he's a, he was a madman, you know. But, bro, you see, I closed that book. I said, yo, bro, they're going to write a book about me one day. <laughs> so it makes you just do dumb things, you know, what's there. Because this stuff settles in your mind, isn't it? It does. You, you bring in negative energy. So yeah. It, like, it settles there. And you know when you hear stories, he's on his little tricycle going yes. to the enemy neighbourhood. and shotgun and he's seen his body dropping and tangled. With me, that made me want to go and do it. Blast up my mother's shotgun and seeing bodies all disformed on the floor. I'll never forget, Gary put me onto that book. And I remember, never forget, I was in jail. And a guy was coming into jail. And he, I know he was wham. And there's a bit in Monster Cody's book where he's like, I think it's Fat Rat, or he's got a confrontation and he gets his cast off his arm and he starts hitting the gym. That mentality oh. stuck with me. I started hitting the gym and I'm reading the book thinking, yo, it's wartime. And when he says, let the um, the bell, let the gates be the bell, when it, when it opens, I'm like, yo, as soon as the door opens for social, i got to go to my man's cell. Obviously went to my man's cell, fronted it, both sp uh, spoke it out. <coughs> but you like to see in that book, warped our mind. Gary, that sent it in worse. You know you know the, the part when he got shot with a 38, I think it was. I still remember that part. Um, the, when he got set up. Yeah, 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 and he got hit, I think, five times with a yeah, 38. Yeah. And he was angry. And, and, he was, and he's in the hospital bed. Now he's got his gun and Gun under the pillow. pillow. Yeah, oh, yeah, whatever. man. So you know, really, I don't know why, why I would want to read stuff like that, but you, because you're in prison. You're yeah, trying, yeah. And now I'm trying to get more books like this. <laughs> and you, know? you can't find them. Because like, this is better than TV. Yeah, the and, book. And them times, I don't think we even had TV in prison or whatever. But like I said, it, <clears throat> when you're outside doing, selling drugs or whatever, yeah. it's kind of like a fuel yeah, yeah. To keep you kind of getting worse and worse. And yeah, worse. yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's really what it is. So what was, you know, so you've got South Manchester, obviously, yeah. you know, you guys. What was the relationship between, like, South Manchester and places like Salford and stuff like that? Um, <laughs> for, I can only speak of for me, for us. Um, Salford did their own thing. Everyone knows Salford ain't nothing to play with. They're in Salford, we're in South Money. Mm. Like, so we never, from Rushum never clashed with him. For, any, for what I know, I don't think many gangs clash with him because they're over there, they're not troubling us. Mm. You can't go to Salford and try and cause trouble because they stick together, even if they're split now, but you still can't go into that area and cause trouble. So Salford were just doing what they're doing, Cheatham were doing what they're doing. All the gang stuff was in South Manchester, all the beef was that little small area between the areas, Mosside, Rushum, Longside, Stretford, Fallowfield, and Old Trafford. And we're all, like I can say, five minutes away from each other's area. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Salford. Salford did, well, did a thing, did a thing. Some ting. big names from there, didn't you? Big names, and so, just oh, think whatever. of it, they're, they're money money makers as well. Yeah. So, you, yeah, we're gangbangers. But they they do their thing as well. I've got the money, and get yeah. the paper, so. That's right, yeah. And that's what I noticed about them. They get yeah. they, do, they do the banging thing, but they get money, They get the paper. Organised crime. So if you did go over there, you best be on a humble trying to link up with him yeah. because it's not going to happen. And it's they, vice versa, like them coming down to Moss Side or Rush Hall. Of Hall, course, yeah. It's not going to happen because it's our area, so yeah, it's yeah. mutual respect. Of course, but, but you can't walk into Moss Side like that. No, 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 no. What, what uh, role do the, the, the Asian criminal facility play in Manchester? Obviously... We all know heroin from Pakistan and them places is dirt mm. cheap, but it's probably one of the best you can get. Um, and they've grew up around us. We've grew up around each other. So where you've seen it back in the 80s probably, and the night is probably as a black culture, where now it's just a multi-culture. Culture, White, yeah. black, Asian, Somali, and Libyan. Anyone does that road thing Long now. Thing now yeah. um, but the blacks and Asians are in Manchester are intertwined because right. we've grew up with them. They've grew up with us. We all grew up on Wimsor Road getting a kebab or a curry. They grew up in the Caribbean food shops. And our backgrounds are similar, the slavery, the skin colours, near enough to say. So we all 
We yeah. all get, we all, we all got along. We all got along. Yeah, I think we, what, what is with the Asian community? I think they were, it was very business kind business, of conducted. Yes, like, yes, Even yes. the drugs and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. And then obviously you know the, the banging thing and your know, guns yeah, and yeah. that comes in play, play later on. And then when you when you <coughs> see like the other communities like banging their gun, you feel you got to bang your, your gun. Your gun, yes. You know what I mean? Just to you know, so your so you rip. so you can say your area, yo, my area's on the thing too. Them man over there are doing it, yeah, but we're doing it. You understand, Instead yeah. of saying, yeah, Lord, let them destroy each other. We're getting money over here. Yeah. We can provide for our family and our community. But, but remember, the the areas that bang their guns, they become the most famous. Yeah, yeah. that's the problem, isn't it? Over there, <laughs> stupid, isn't that it? Pay is alone is not respected. <laughs> right? that's dumb no, it's stuff true. You, it's true though. But that's just how it goes, you know. Because I used to have the saying um, when say I'm arguing with someone, he's got money. And it's your bedroom, but he's got money. I'm like, yeah, but put it this way. What can money do? I rob you. You're going to have to pay someone. Mm. Someone's going to hear your name and not take up that job. But paper can't do nothing. Paper ain't going to pick up a gun. Now, I'd rather be the gangster because if you try and do me, I know I've got the heart to try and come and take your life. Mm. And if you're making money, do you want to risk making that money? Yo, I ain't got nothing to live for. I, yo, I've got a burner on my waistline. I'm on all black. I've probably got £20 in my back pocket for a weed. Yo, I will go at war with you all day. <laughs> so, so you got nothing better to do. Yeah, I got nothing better to oh, I got nothing to live for. That's true, man. Um, so now you're out 21. Yeah. What's the plan, bro? So I ain't gonna lie, right back in it to make Gary proud, right back in it the night we got out, the, the day I got out, the night time, me and G, Gary shot someone, both got arrested. He did like 24 hours in the station or like a day and a half. I did like 12, 16 hours, let me go. Both got out, we're both running, selling drugs, both running Rush Home Crew Gangsters, the gang that we created in Rush Home. Um, two, that was two, three, two, by two, five comes. Most of the gang members are out. So it's back to Gunchester days, Gooch are out, Dodderton, Pitbull Crew, Longsight, Stretford, Rush Home, Fallowfield, Old Trafford. The main gangs that are going at each other are LSC, but all, like, most of the members are out. So it's hot again, you've got to carry your gun on your, you've got to have a bulletproof vest. Then I went to my side one night to shoot somebody well a lot for people to shoot knew where they were going to be in this park called rep park left my brother and another guy in the alley i've come out the alley i've gone right i've gone right again onto the next road there's about four four five six of these kids who are about 50, between 15 and 17 and i've got like um the 44 on me and i swear i've just hit the corner it's, it's dark it's about half 10 at night and they've all just gone and i'm not about from here to Apart from this curtain to where you are, so I could have at least, I could have shot every single one of them. The only, <coughs> sorry, the only reason I didn't is because I remember what Gary said, when you kill somebody, that, and I can't have a 15-year-old, 16-year-old, 17-year-old's um, death on my conscience, because what are they going to do? Even though these kids were gangbanging, or even if they weren't, they were affiliated with, with Dodderton, they're going to put his little face on the news, then if I get caught for it, they're going to put his face and say, Matthew Norford, rare responsible for killing this 15-year-old kid with his... Um, his school shirt on, looking mm. all innocent. But really, you want to say, that little such and such was chasing me down with his with his brethren. He weren't no angel like Look, that. But they're not going to hear that. They're just going to see... That's the problem, isn't it? 20, 25 year, 24 year old killed 15. So I let him run off. Then we ended up getting in a shootout. I ended up getting shot with a Mac 10 machine gun. I went through my left leg. Bro, but, I was just, you know the way you said that so casually, like, I was shot with, like, a Mac 10 machine gun. <laughs> like, it's just like that happens every other day. Just let's go back a little bit. Yeah, yeah. How, how did that situation kind of come about? Before I continue today's podcast, guys, I want you guys to check out this company, Altitude. These guys do premium-grade shilajit, very high quality. And one very important thing I noticed with this company is the shilajit is tested in the UK in a lab. So it's UK lab tested. They have a barcode on the back, which is very important to check and scan all the details and make sure everything's genuine. The packaging is high quality. I take the shilajit myself and one little touch I really like that I haven't seen before. I like this. This is a metal kind of gold colored spoon. It really looks really nice. looks really nice quality to take your shilajit with every day. Guys, they're giving a 10% discount if you type in the code KICKUP. Capital letters, KICKUP on their website. Go check it out. All the links are in the description box below. Check it out. So when I've let them run off, I'm going back to the alley now. And um, there's a park called Rep Park. And also that's, that was their park. We used to chill in the Grove. They knew if you're looking for them brothers, you go to the Grove or around there. I know if you're looking for them Donut Boys, you go around Rep Park, around Carlsby Street and that. So I've heard someone shout, who's that? In money, if you see someone you don't know, you just shout, yo, who's that? And nine times out of 10, you're going to shout the right name. Yo, it's Skelly, it's G. But this is in Rush Home. So I knew when they're saying that, if I say skelly, it's not going to go down right. So I ran to the park. 
And all I can see is like shadows of, you know, people running and ducking. I'm like, shall I just shoot indiscriminately into the park? Obviously, I know them words now, but back then I didn't know them words. It was like in my head, should I shoot randomly? And I thought, imagine if I catch a young person. I can't have it on my conscience. So I've gone to the alleyway and I've gave my brother the gun and said, yo, let's go that way back to rush home. He's gone further out into my side. Crossed it, he's crossed his road, gone down like this little entryway. I've stopped because a car's coming. And obviously, <clears> I used to have a balaclava pulled down and then a bandana. So all you can see is literally the white of my eyes. So I have to let the car come. And I'm a spiritual person. I know God exists for everything I've been through. And I swear, I'll see the voice say, look to your right. So I've looked like behind me, Dag, no. See, I got a kid running with a gun. So I've gone, it's called Moss Siberia. Behind Moss Siberia, there's a big patch of grass. So I'm going over this grass. And my mum's like, all I can hear is, up to this point, I've not been shot at. So I'm still thinking about the movies. I'm thinking about the oldest told me that, yo, when you get shot at, they make it sound cool. Yeah. Like you just said, I said it casual over Mac 10. Mm. So I'm like, yeah, so I'm ripping now. I was here, bang, 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 about six shots. And I could feel the wind like, so, so, so. I was scared. Yo, at that moment, I wanted my big bro. I'm thinking, you should have kept your ass in the house. It's a Sunday, the Lord's Day. What are you doing? And you ain't got your gun on you. No, no, but give it to my brother. Oh. So then I'm thinking, JJ, can't you hear this? So JJ's come out of the alley, um, bust, um, I think two shots, they shot at each other. So I'm like three quarters of the way over this croft. I thought, yes. Yo, I just heard God say, oh, Jesus. I just heard a voice say, look to your left, look to your left. There's a guy all in black, balaclava on with a Mac 10 machine gun with the, st the stock out and he's walking Another sideways. guy? Yeah, so the guy, he had a pistol. My brother's come out, shot at him. So as I'm like riding there, he's come out in the middle of the road. So I'm going across a patch of grass and he's walking, but he's walking sideways like that. And I thought, oh, this guy knows what he's doing. He's not holding it like the, sorry, yeah. he's not holding it like the movies. No. And he had he's it there. He's on you. He's on me and I'm riding with my bulletproof vest on my pedal bike like that. And in my mum's life, I've just gone, God, if this kid's going to shoot me, please let this kid shoot me in my lower body. He's lowered it, and then he's let off the whole 30. Just like, Rap! my mum's life is like, I thought it was going to be like the movies, you know, you get shot and you roll off your bike yeah, all dramatic. Yeah. Nah, <clears throat> it just felt like someone needed me at first. So we're ripping, we're ripping. Then another little shooting happened, and I got to my son's granddad's house, and that's when I threw myself over the wall, and his name, he was a Jamaican guy. So you know Jamaican man like to cook at night time, got the mm. door open. I'm like, yes. So I've crawled in the door, I've gone, yo, phone the ambulance he goes oh, go on blood I've gone and phone the ambulance please tell him an old white lady's been robbed and stabbed don't give him my name because I know that if you say you've a gun they ain't coming quickly police the ambulance will park around the corner and wait for that armed response to come and sweep the area so he's just gone oh my son-in-law Matthew's been shot I'm thinking why have you just said that <laughs> I said tell her old white lady's been stabbed <laughs> panicking oh my son-in-law's been shot but he's panicking yeah. there. <laughs> so I've got on his soul for and that's when I knew where I got shot I'm lying down and my left leg's straight. I can't bend it. It's it's bleeding. So she's put a towel so on it. Where you got hit exactly? My left, top of my left thigh. Okay. So if that's the thigh there. Okay. So then Gary's come, JJ, and my brother Nathan, God rest his soul. And the only way to, to, to say it, Gary's going on, but he's going on because I quit you because I was like, you flipping knob. So I mean, you could have got yourself killed. Rare, 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 rare. And I'm just thinking, bro, shut up and get me to the hospital. But he's actually, you can see it in his eyes. He's hurt that, yo, yeah, yeah, you're dumb as you do and you could have got yourself killed. So I'm hobbling on JJ and Nathan and I just hear the car come up, seen the window go down, seen the arm come out. I thought, I'm not dying tonight. Again? I, again, I'm a mum's life. Oh, I've just gone, man. threw my head back, threw my head back, conked my head off the floor because I just threw myself back. I ain't gonna lie, I was scared. I've just been shot. I ain't trying to die tonight on a Sunday wet night. I just heard bang, bang. And I just heard boom from the 44 or the 45, whatever one Gary had. And you just heard the window shatter. You say, did, 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 did. They spun off. So we so were. Gary's let off on them before they could let off themselves. No, they've let off two at us. Okay, and he's then that's off. why I dropped back because when I okay. seen the alcohol, I went off. I'm not dying tonight, so I've dropped myself back. I was saying crack, crack. Then, but obviously there was might have been a nine or whatever because yeah. there was a lot of rebar guns back then. Hundred, yeah. Ours were proper forty fives, forty fours. I was saying boom, big kickback. Yeah, the big kickback. So they've spun off, but when you come out of this estate, you can only go right or left because there's a school called Trinity there. So they've gone right. I swear to you, brother, no longer them. 15 seconds, we're behind them, but we've took a left to go to the hospital. My brother, we're in a Honda Record, automatic, you know, them old long ones. So my brother's gone, ooh, he's gone, there they are behind us from, for a second, my heart stopped, I thought, oh, this is it, they're right behind us, they've got the drop. So when I've looked behind, <laughs> when we've took the left, the police and the paramedics were there, like on the right hand corner. So JJ jumped out with the guns, ran into the estate. Gary's turned the car around and we drove literally about three, four seconds behind us. Gary came to a skidding halt, I swear on my entire soul. The police dived for cover like that, like proper dived on the floor. 
the paramedics got in the ambulance and drove off because think of it they know about the shooting in my side yeah. they know about the other shooting then they know about the sh they just heard the shots literally behind him seen a car come skidding that way one car come that way stop a guy jump out clearly with two guns in his hand run off and this car's just come to a skidding halt in front of him they thought they were going to shoot him hit. yeah so I've hobbled out, pulled my body up, and I'm like on my right leg. Ah, I'm the one that's been shot. I remember this is all the gang police, so they all know us. Mm. And just skipping on, I know one of the police because I kind of work with him now. And he even said, when we heard that you got shot when it first come through, I burst out laughing. And for a minute, I was angry. And I said, you know what? I get it. You're a cop. I'm tearing up the streets. Me and my brothers are getting kids to shoot people. We're doing all this. I get it. You're on the right side. Andrew, yeah. I get it. So I wasn't even angry. But then I'm on the ground. The, he battered Nathan, the cops battered Nathan battered Gary they hated Gary um, I'm on the floor and I'm like we're both looking at each other and I'm like ah get the ambulance back I ain't gonna lie but this bullet's burning I wanted to cry I ain't gonna lie but because as I cry you know when something happens like the, the community comes out I'm thinking boy don't cry because if you die crying then there's on your headstone puts oh my mum was a muppet my mum died crying all that dumbness is going through my head but I'm looking at my brother and you can see Gary doesn't do emotions the oldest one really has to be the, the tough one of the house but mm -hmm. I can see a tear in his eye because he's thinking, yo, where else has my brother been shot? <clears throat> I'm like, get the ambulance back. The police are like, we have to wait for the nearest arm response. And it's setting out from Cheshire. So you're looking like 45 minutes. What? Man's already been bleeding about 30, 40 minutes already. Um, and then uh, the police are gone. We don't care if you die. All the people that like, you've done things to and Gary's murdered and you've got kids to shoot people's house. We don't care if you die. And laughed and turned around and carried on talking. I remember thinking, rah, you know, I'm a gangster. I ain't supposed to care. You're a police. You're paid to care. So I remember blacking out, I woke up in the ambulance and I'm handcuffed. And the paramedic, she's like, not slapping, but she's like, Matthew, don't fall asleep. You know, you've lost too much blood. You can you know, not wake up. I remember looking, thinking, you smell nice. You got nice lipstick. <laughs> I want your number. <laughs> but then I looked, obviously I'm lying down and I've looked up and I was just like saying, I believe in God, I've gone, God, I don't want to survive. I want to die. Like, I'm tired. Like, kids think it's all finger. By this point, I'm 24. So I've been doing it for like nine years nearly 10 years it takes its toll it's a mental pressure yes yeah, smoking weed drinking alcohol that messes with your mental mm. state guys trying to chase you down you trying to chase guys down you're waking up to make a bit of money but your objective is to kill someone mm. what kind of daftness is that and then <clears throat> the trauma your mum not having no parents and then police trying to give you life in jail trying to talk to you about murders and attempt murders you think yo i didn't do that i might have did that but i ain't did that and you're trying to no 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 so I just I was ready to give up. I closed my eyes and I swear on my life when I woke up in the hospital, I don't know, an hour later or whatever, <coughs> I was actually wounded. For the first minute, I was like, oh, shit, it's not my dream. I'm not, oh, I'm not dead. So I'm like, where's my brother? And he got all the arm response. I'm like, who? Like, Gary. They went, oh, we've locked him up. So I'm like, what are you locking my brother up for? I'm the victim. They went, <laughs> they don't care. They don't care, but they're not dumb. They went, yeah. tell you, um, we've locked him up so your brother doesn't kill anybody. I'm like, oh, whatever. So then this murder detective come. Um, DCI something he's gone just tell your brother to murder someone between and it's, it was Sunday between Sunday and Thursday because we're off duty and I can't be bothered chasing your brother again he's a nasty piece of work I'm like he ain't gonna kill no one but well, he killed someone over your car getting robbed when you was in jail now his little brother's been shot what do you think he's gonna do am I my brother's keeper I went oh whatever and then the doctor's coming he's gone oh you've been shot in your left left leg and this was a younger doctor so I'm arguing with him like oh, so why does my whole lower body feel a bit funny like it's ache, it just feels funny. He's like, oh, that's your body reacting to the trauma of being shot. Rare, rare, rare. So I'm proper arguing with him. I never forget the police just went, shut your mouth, bang. And you've seen the the, the arm response. They don't mess about. They don't mess about. The six foot five, they don't like they've been about, eating yeah. weights. And you just look for a second because the first thing's to look like, you look at him, guns. He looks like he wants to smash off it. Yeah, he leave that one. The yeah, face in the hospital. Yeah, bed. yeah. He's gonna say anything. I'm, I'm, but I'm proper arguing. Like, I swear, like the doctor. You prick. Well, my legs, uh, my whole body feels funny. Rare, rare. So then shut your mouth, you right there. Oh. From the doctor. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know the night you could get battered. The police used to take off the belts and say, yeah, come on, prick. I thought they had a bit of sympathy got shot. <laughs> but remember, I'm a gang leader they don't like. They don't like you, isn't it? And they were hoping you die. Yeah, they were, the guy even said, yo. Did the bullet go in and out? Went through. So the older doctor come down. So I'm going to say he's about 70 and he's gone, Mr. Narford. He's gone through your left, left leg. <coughs> And he's held my penis in two hands and it's gone through the bottom of my penis. So there, it was like a, like, like a snap branch. I, bl I just went out, blacked out. So then obviously, I, I had a dream that I was at home. So when I woke up the next morning, I'm like, yeah, I'm at, just seen the hospital. I thought, oh yeah, I've been shot. So then the doctor come and said, oh yeah, it's gone through your left leg. Your, your testic, your penis, it's gone through your right testicle and it's in your right thigh. So it went through the left leg, penis, right testicle, it's in no the right leg. Way. Bro, I see my look. 
so the doc this doctor's coming up and he's like you know them new trainee nurses fresh out of uni they're looking nice so i'm just like how should i get a number bro this guy <laughs> <laughs> yo i don't know that's our program Jesus. the doctor lifted up the sheet and went this is a gunshot wound to the penis all the women went <laughs> but they couldn't hold the laughter burst out laughing bro what in the bed to just sink me in the bed and just like why have you just shown him that that's for the students. They yeah, student nurses. But yeah, you know what I wanted that, to yeah. say? I wanted to say, yeah, I love. It's not normally like that. But that's kind of perfect. So I thought, keep your mouth shut. That could <laughs> receive us wrong. So then I seen the cuff at the back and I'm like, oh, what's that? Why did they put your cuff at the back? Where's that tube going? What's going in that tube? Am I having a piss? <gasps> oh, I can't use my penis. Oh, I swear my heart sank. Oh, because as a guy, remember I'm, what, 24, 25. I'm just thinking about sex. I've already got three boys. So I don't need no more kids. I'm just yeah, thinking, as yeah. long as I can do the business, I'm going to ask about if, I can, if my sperm's dead. So then uh, my brother's come in and Gary, so I'm on the bed here. Gary's just walked past me. He wouldn't look at me. He's looked out the window. He's gone, you all right, bro? I've gone, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's gone, where did it go? I told him now. I'm like, yo, bro, if, if man can't have kids, yo, man have to, everyone has to go. He's like, yo, it is what it is, bro. And he's just looking out the window and he's gone, you know we have to get man back. I've gone, yo, it's part of the game, man. Me and you shot people, and obviously you've licked a man down, God rest his soul. It's part and parcel of it. He just couldn't let go, like, I'm his little brother, and he knows I've done all this for him. He's gone, mm. and you can see the tear in his eyes, gone, nah, man ain't getting away with shit, my little brother. And then um, he's got, I said, I'm getting off, bro, I'm going to get some sleep, I check in a bit. So me and the nurse are downstairs, I'm having a cigarette. The guy that shot me, his little brother's just turned the corner with his mum. They might have been in the hospital for whatever reason, but I just thought, yo, they come to do me monster Cody, phone my brother. Um, Gary's come with um, Casper, chased him. They've got off. So um, the police have moved me another ward to another ward where there's two doors. You can get in through the first, but the second one you've got to get buzzed in. So mm. I swear down, God's my witness. And my uncle even told me who it was um, from Donaton. She's gone, three guys here to get in to see you. And I know none of my boys are coming like three deep. So I've gone, what colour are they? And she's gone, mixed race. I've gone, no, no, they're from the gang that shot me. Now nah, my gang's black and white. So she's gone, ah, like panic, press on butter. But an iPhone, um, G, G's come. Um, JJ or Casper, we one of my other brothers. G's chased him down, shot the car up. Like, she let off two shots, hit the car. Kyle's give me a gun. The nurse has seen it, told me, I know your mum. Was at the hospital? Yeah, 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 yeah. Remember, I've read Monster Cody. So I'm deep now, no, how old am I now? 25, so I'm like 24, 25. I'm like 10, 11 years in this. I'm a, I'm a old, I'm an OG. So they shot at them in the car park, basically? No, when they were getting off from the hospital, yeah. G chased them and shot at the car. So when G Kyle's giving the gun, the nurse is saying, I know your mum, get rid of it. I'm like, yeah, you're gonna phone police, ain't you? Yo, bro, come and get so this. your mum worked in the hospital? Yeah, yeah, she was a nurse. So she got rid of it, I got moved wards the next day, and then they kicked me out and said, you have to be an outpatient. <laughs> so I'm in a wheelchair. And I'm like, I always skip this part, but I'm never forgetting my mum can verify it. I'm in a taxi going to my baby mother's and she lived in Garton and we lived in Russia and obviously you have to go through long sight. But mom, this is my luck. I'm in the back of the taxi with my mum, with the crutches, because I'm thinking, then mum will come out where I lived every day. And obviously... Let me get the ends. Yeah, so I thought, let me just go to Garton. You're crutches, isn't yeah. you? You're vulnerable now. Yeah, bro, I can't run out of nothing. Yeah. Bro, we come down um, Hill Place and we turn on to Moss Lane East, bro. Tell me why the car in front of me was full of Donaton, man. At least four of them. And I'm lying down in the back like, please don't turn around look at me, please. And mum's like, who's that? I'm like, it's them. And I remember, I've just been shot, so I ain't, I ain't gonna sit here like, yo, I'm ready for it. I didn't want to die. Like I said, I knew um, the guys I was going against ain't, ain't knobs, because yeah. clearly I've been shot and from the get-go, they're not knobs. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm thinking if they turn around now, they're gonna light the car with my mum. And obviously, all oh, that's going through your head because you're super paranoid. Thank God they just drove on the taxi. Went, like, go left, go left, go left. Got to my baby mother's house, slammed the door, yo, I ain't gonna lie. I was relieved. Um, I was in a wheelchair for a couple of months on crutches. Carried on running the gang with my brother. And then in 2009, police raided and my other baby mother's house and found money and drugs in there. They gave me seven years. They charged her, but I took the charge. Got seven years knocked down to six years on a guilty plea. And I did three years. And that last time made me change my whole life around. You see, um, just quickly, did they get the bullet out? No, no, it's still there. Still it moves there. about. Where were all these guns coming from in Manchester, you reckon? I, can, I know for a fact, because I've been on some of them with him. Liverpool, because he had friends. I ain't going to say the name, but he had friends in Liverpool. One of them got done for shooting at police for a Mac 10. He got 10, and then one got done for a murder. He got 23, I think he's done. About 13, he's got about another 10 left. Um, so he's getting them from Liverpool, obviously the docks. And he's a fresh mini. Um, this is what I got out. Two, three. No one had mini Glocks on money. No one had the mini Glocks. Yo, plastic. Yo, we had the mini Glock. 
he got him from a guy from the army, a mixed face guy who came out in the army. All our guns, none of our guns were reboard. Mm. The 9mm Beretta, the 9mm Luger, the 45, the 44 revolver, um, the 12 gauge shotgun, seven shots. We had the sawn off, we had a 38, we had two deuce deuces, and we had a Sterling machine gun with a tripod where you can go from semi to automatic. And that was only between 10 of us. So everyone kind of, there was always a gun in the in the wheelie bin, in the car boot. In the ends. In the ends, we was always had a gun because we lived in the Grove. There was always, there was always a gun available. And this was, this was Gary. This was like, but I, I remember thinking, rah, man, when man are talking about banana clips, we had a banana clip for it. Mm. Like a little tripod. Now Manchester and Liverpool had some serious straps back in the day, man. Yeah. Because that was, you know, in London at that time, that was the air, air off, you know, Rebels. Yeah, yeah, Rebars. And they were going <laughs> crazy because they were like 500 pounds. Yeah. It's like stupid. They were like... But man are getting shot and not dying. Yeah, but what, well, man's... Bread have, bread blew their own hand off. Yeah, because they're, they're yeah, backfiring. Thing, backfiring yeah. The bullets exploding in the chamber and all that type of stuff. Because that was that era. But one of the things that was kind of well known that up north... The man got the proper thing because of the docks. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the docks and the army. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, Liverpool. I don't even lie. We had a um, connection for grades, grenades, 150, mm. two ton for pineapples. And they've been used in Manchester. Yeah, been, times. yeah but yeah, we were going to have them. But I always said to my brother, you know, if you let that off, You're done. we're done. There's, we're not getting out of jail. But obviously, when you're so angry because man have came through, you're thinking, right, go shoot up the party or whatever. Throw a grenade in the back, throw one in the front. Whoever runs out, they're going to get shot up. Like when you're on a suicide mission because you've had enough, you just want to wipe out loads of people. We had them thoughts, we had them plans. Mm. We've had plans to. I've seen Gary waiting in a wheelie bin for a man. And when he came out, Gary, like, so he's in the wheelie bin. <laughs> I should laugh. But so when the guy's come, he's just like nudges himself forward. So you know, he's dropped, but he's dropped like that, like, don't move. And like, crawled out the bin. And obviously, got the money off him. And I just remember thinking, Robbed him. Yo, I won't want to go to war with you because he had a heart of gold because he taught me you don't hit women, yeah. you don't hurt, you don't hurt civilians, the old people. But he was serious about what he was on though. What we was on, that's why Gary was a leader. I always say mm. I only became good and feared to a degree. I'm not saying everyone, oh here comes Skelly to scare, but man were when you hear me and my brother's name or the Russia man, mm. everyone would take notice because we're known to do what we do. Yeah. But I only became so good because I'm a brother, because I loved him and I didn't want to let him down. So when I'm going to jail, I'm telling like I'm saying my heart's like that. Ah. Some guys will stay on the wing. I'm going off because, not because I'm a bad man, I'm not having Gary get reports that his little brother's not coming off the wing. I just don't want to let him down in no way, so you know what, I'm going to front it. Yeah, I'm going to do this. So you see, like you said, now you're going back to jail again, they found yeah. drugs and stuff like that. A class, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, yeah. How long did you get? Six years. So you've gone back after you got, so how long is it after you got shot? Um, two, five, four years. It was the longest period, seven years I've been out. That's what hurt me so much. Seriously. So seven. after you got shot, you were just back to work again. I was, more, I, ain't gonna lie, I was paranoid because when you've been shot, you don't want to get shot again. So I was paranoid. I ain't going to lie for a good four, five, six months. I didn't want to come out now. So when I did, if I would have seen you dressed in all black, and even though it was a black guy who shot me, two Asian guys, yo, who's that? I'm going that way. I was proper. I don't know. It just did something to me. PTSD. Yeah. Man, of but then didn't want to let Gary down. So I'm going out with him. And in the back of the car, I'm shitting it. But I can't let him know. So I'm going through it. And that helped me kind of get over it. To a degree. You know what it was like? Have you ever seen The Wire? Yeah, bro. You know, the Wire cut, and the Shield. Cutty. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> His heart was in it, but he was trying to front in it, you know? And then when he got the drop on the little kid, he, went to, he couldn't smoke Couldn't do it, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he but you know, I like the bit when he was real, man. He went to Avon, and he goes to Avon, look, my heart's not in this no more, man. And Avon goes, Avon goes to him, the art right, cool, we put you in the corner of Saturday to make use of you. He goes, nah, nah, you listen to me. It's not me. It's not me, I'm done. And was there. My uncle from London, a gosmo witness. And then and then he goes, he goes to him. When he leaves, Slim Charles goes, My man used to be the man, man. And he goes, He a man today. Yeah. He a man today. You remember that part? Yeah, yeah, that. Because you know what you know why Avon rated that? He's being real. Because he's being real, isn't it? My uncle like, did the same thing, Gosmo witness, long story short, when we was working for my uncle Ace, God rest his soul, when it was one of the biggest drug dealers in, in South Money. So I'm saying to my uncle, my uncle Lone Dog, who's me from London, nice guy. Gary's like, yo, take him out to the shots houses. So ballad up, took the deuce deuce with me. I'm just showing yo, uncle, I'm proud because it's my uncle. Like, yo, uncle, this is such and such. This is the drug houses rare. Mum's life, I'm lying. God killed me on the way back home. Lord, let me make, make it back home to see my princess. He's my life. He's gone, nephew, this ain't for me. I'm going to get a job. This ain't for me. And then put the ballet down and walked off and went and got a job at Foot Locker. And I always respected him because at least you being real, I wasn't being real. I should have told G, now I want to do basketball. But because of the love, and I didn't want to let him down, I'm going to do it. Mm, and it I was, tell him. 
you you were trying to like make someone else happy. Yeah, and fronting at the same time. Yeah, being fake, mm, being and fake, all yeah. it did is give me PTSD. Got me shot, went to jail, and then like I said, yeah, the third time that made me turn my whole life around. That was. How long did you do out of that? Three and a half? Free, just free, straight free. Just straight free, yeah. yeah. And uh, how was that sentence for you? Like, obviously, much more mature now, isn't it? Yeah, much more mature. Didn't have no fights on that sentence. Because um, by then, all my era know who I am. They know I can fight. They know I'm about my gun playing. And they know with us, it's different. We've got four, like, there's four of us from my mum. And everyone knows, you mess with one brother, the other three are coming. So it's not like you can mm. be free. Even if I don't talk to one of them, you can't touch my brother without repercussions. Mm. It's, that's all I've got. So did strange ways, went to a few other jails and went to the open jail, started coming home, you know, for the town visits and week weekends, did a five day home leave, come back. Obviously it was open jail, I had a mobile phone, I'll never forget. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, I'm speaking to everyone. Wednesday morning, woke up, 27th of July, it's a hot day. Anyone who's been to open jail, you know what it's like. So I'm sat on the bench on the, um, the grass outside the unit. I'm smoking a burn. Well, I'm about to smoke my burn, got my coffee. I'm thinking, yeah, 27 days, I'm going home again. I've only got 16 months, but I'm going home every month now for five days. Mm -hmm. Some guy comes running up to me, some inmate. He's from London, but he's got family in Manchester. And he's a cool guy, but he talks dribble. He'd tell you, so I'd hear him tell you a story, yo, I chased a man and shot after him. Fair play. Two weeks later, another guy comes in, yo, I chased a man down, jumped over two cars, I did a roly-poly, <laughs> and then shot him six times. You're like, bro, yo, a month ago, yeah, yeah, yeah he's added on. Yeah, you get <laughs> So he's come running up to me and it's like eight in the morning. I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, oh, what does he want? He's going, ah, Skelly Beard, Skelly Beard, what happened last night? I've gone, nah, nah, nah. He's gone, two of your brothers got stabbed. I've gone, yo, nah, not my brothers, yo, we shoot first. He's gone, nah, nah, yeah, yeah, two have been stabbed, one's dead. I'm still thinking, yo, this guy's talking crap because I had a mobile phone, so I'm thinking, my mum would have phoned me. Somebody would have texted me. Mm. Someone would have, my mum would have phoned the jail to let, so I could know. So I got on a pr the prison phone. So obviously, I'm not going to bring my mobile phone out in the daytime. I said, morning, mum. She's like, morning. So I'm like, what's going on? She's like, nothing. I'm like, where are you? She's like, going to Liverpool with your brother JJ. So, so I'm like, in my mind, when I catch this guy, I'm going to smash his face in. But I had that little, little feeling in my gut and I've gone, nah, forget all that. What have you heard about my brother? My mum was so scared to tell after when I got out, she told me. I was so scared to tell you. Because remember, open prison, you ain't got to escape. Yo, bro, come and get me from the back of it. Jump over the fence, we're gone. So she was scared because she knows me and Gary are like soulmates with twins. So she was thinking, if I tell him now, he's gonna escape and he's gonna go and kill someone. And obviously, as much as she was oh, wow. a bad so mum. She was fronting on the phone. She, yeah, basically. she was fronting like everything's all right because she didn't want to lose two kids. Yeah. So then I've gone, forget all that mum, what have heard about my brother? And I never forget, she just went. <sighs> and that just killed me because I knew something bad was coming. She went, Gary's dead. And Gary's her firstborn son. I said, you what? She went, yeah, your brother's dead. He got stabbed last night in his heart, he's dead. The other brother, Kyle, my little one, he's the youngest. He's 10 years younger than me. Love my man to death. Oh, he's like, he's a, he's, a, he's a different version of me. I, he's a, I love the guy. And um, she's gone, your brother Kyle's got stabbed. He's in a coma. So I've put the phone down and I'm walking to my pad. I've smashed the door, but I'm crying. And there's a guy from another gang who I didn't really get on with. He's on his phone and shout respect to him. He's put the phone down on his missing and gone, what's up? And I've just walk, I'm walking on. And me and him don't really get on. And I'm like, he killed my brother. So I've gone to my pad and I'm rolling, trying to roll tobacco and it's going everywhere. I'm like, I spoke to him last night and my man's come and gone, yo, what's going on, Rare? I told him he took the beer and rolled it. Put the news on and as soon as I heard Gary's name stabbed Gary Mullings, I just, I dropped to my knees and I swear, all I can, it was like someone was just stabbing me in my heart, just completely stabbing me. I couldn't breathe. Like I wanted to commit suicide. So I've gone outside and all this time, I've, um, you, you're allowed to go home for two days in an open prison. When something like this happens, you're allowed to go home. So that's all in the process. I'm, I remember, I swear, if I'm lying, God kill me in the worst way tonight. I've just heard a voice, it's hot. I'm looking at the sun, I've just heard a voice say, say F God, like the proper word, but I won't say it, say F God. And I know the devil comes when you're at your lowest point. I'm Definitely. hurt, I'm in the devil's playground, I'm in jail. I'm far away from my brother. I've just found out he's dead. I've got no one around me, like who I grew up with. And it's, it's on the, I can't lie, God, no, it's on the tip of my tongue. And I can just hear a voice, a subtle voice, God or Jesus saying, don't say it. Matthew, just don't say that. And you know, you're so angry, I'm like, I look at the cell, I've just gone, God, why have you did this to me? Why have you took my brother? <laughs> Dropped to my knees. Satan works in Satan works quickly. About an hour later, I'd have gone go to reception, sign you um your license, and you can go on for two days. So I'm just like, yo, bro, I'm still crying. I'm talking with your lips like snot's coming. I'm I'm oh, I'm heartbroken. So I'm on the reception desk, I like, my head's down. I've just felt click. So obviously I've not even said anything, I've just looked up, tears come up my eyes, snot. And the judge has gone, sorry, the judge, the governor's gone, the gang police, Excalibur, have phoned us and told us. Because when you go to jail, they only know what you're in for, your offence. Oh, yeah. 
So our minds, it's us, repeat drug dealer. Yeah. Didn't know about gang Violence. leader and all the, the shooting. So police filled him in and said, get him out of that prison. Told him what, what Gary means to me. So he go, we've got to take you to Doncaster. So they've moved me straight away. And I'll never forget when I got there that day, I didn't know no one. And that night I had a, a experience, I'm talking to Gary. And when I woke up in the morning, I've opened my eyes and I'm seeing the cell. I thought, oh, my brother is dead. So see, I was in that jail for like six, seven weeks. And every day they tell me you can go to the funeral. Cause that's law. They, you, you know, they take pedophiles, they take rapists, yeah. they take life is with police escort. So the, it was on a Friday, the Thursday night when everyone's banged up at Soul, I think at eight o'clock, they've gone go to reception and try your outfit on. So as I'm walking, with, try your funeral clothes. So as I'm walking, I'm thinking, I can give him a kiss on his cheek. I can help, you know, dig the grave, say a few words in the church. I can see my family. So when I've got there and I've seen the two big security officers and then the, the woman governor's coming and she's just gone, we can't let you go, Matthew. Police have told us who he is and what what Gary means. There's going to be gang members there and rare, rare for the safety. You know how to do the safety for the the police, the officers and you and the staff and the public. I'm not going to lie, I dropped to my knees and I, I, oh, I, I don't even know what the words to describe it. I was heartbroken to see like someone dying of a broken heart. I felt like that. But I was looking around the office, the governor's office. I wanted the scissors. I swear, God, by the way, so I was just going to stab him in the neck and just drag it like that. Remember, this guy's dead now. So the guy that gave me love is gone. So where, where's it coming the from? last chance to see him. Yeah. So they said, but what we're going to do, this is Satan working. We're going to take you to the chapel of rest. I'm just thinking I get out of jail for a couple hours. Go down the motorway, I can have a cig, get a bit of fresh air. So I said, let's go. I should have said no. They took me there. The gang police are there. Shout out to Rod. Rod said the cop, this is a good thing. He said, take the cuffs off him. And the, the officers are arguing, saying, no, where are he runs? He's like, where's he going to run to? His mum's or his girlfriend. The, the, they can't go nowhere. So they took the, the thingy off. I've gone in there and um, walked up to this coffin. And I'm like, who's in this coffin? Because my mind's just traumatised. And I've looked at it. Gary looked like a mixed race guy. He was proper fair skin. When I've looked at him, it was darker than the night sky. So he's had a blue hat, blue cardigan, um, like a blue shirt on, blue jeans, socks. So he's lying, he's lying like that, like on his back. And I'm just staring at him, and obviously I'm thinking, I'm not even gonna lie, I thought he's gonna go, ah, blagging you, because he looks so peaceful, I thought he can't be dead. Mm. So then like in the movies, I thought, let me give him one last brother handshake. When I felt his hand and it was frozen stiff to his thigh, I dropped to the, I dropped to the, to the floor, oh, that broke my soul, that broke me in half. Went back outside, I said, take me back to jail. I've had a panic attack in the cell. The next morning, all that did at that point is make me ready to phone man to go and give him an address or go lick him down. Cause I'm not stupid. I know police can know I did something. You got to prove I've did something. Mm. Now, if I'm in jail and don't, don't not dumb enough to say it over the phone, I don't say it on my mobile phone. Cause if you get the phone, you can get who I called. If I just put a visit up, and I know your bug table, cause I know all this from Gary's murder trial, mm -hmm. and I just get you to come in and go. I know you're stern. You're from Leeds, or you're from Sheffield, wherever. You go and kill the guy in Manny. Get back off. Yeah, police are gonna come and see me, but I'm in jail. Mm. There's no, there's, there's so no trace. Yeah, there's so. Yeah, you know I mean. Um, and in the morning I woke up and I'm in jail JD's in jail Gary's, um, Kyle's in jail Nathan's in jail and obviously Gary's dead so I phoned my mum and all the kids are in jail except for her daughter the little one's been stabbed now yeah he's stabbed as well he's just come out of a coma and stabbed it in his back and twisted a knife and I've gone morning mum she's gone morning I've gone mum so sorry I can't come to the funeral and because I was in that open prison she thought I'd be the only one to come at least yeah. she's got one of her sons yeah. and um, she's gone they won't let your brothers come too She's going, it's all right now, I've got a go, son. I just brought Gary's body to me, it's downstairs. And then in my first time in my life, I heard my mum go, <gasps> I start crying. When I put that phone down, I felt so ashamed that, yo, this woman, yeah, she'd been the best mum to me, but without the feeding me and clothes and the things she did do, where would I be? Because my dad didn't step up. We all would have been in kids' home. So I thank her for that. But this woman's going to bury her firstborn kid with none of her other kids to help her. Do you know, I felt lower than low. I remember like dropping to my knees crying, you got all the man there, like putting their arms around me, it's your brother, yo, let it out. I remember thinking, I don't give a F what you think. If I want to cry over it, I cry. I'm one of them, I do what I want to do. I don't care how you perceive me. And I've gone in my door and that's the moment I decided to change my life. I just dropped to my knees and I've gone, God, whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do whatever you, whatever you want me to go through, I'll go through because I've done it my way and my best friend's gone. And then I decided to change my life and I ain't going to say it happened overnight because I was still in jail for 16 months crying and working around trauma and learning about PTSD. Um, but through jail, there's a woman called Jane Carr. She's a white woman. She was a drug and alcoholic worker. Yeah. And she was just, she was like a, a mum to all the man them in jail. You know how it is, the Asian, black, white. If you're from a certain area or you're in for a certain charge, you got certain morals, we all chill together. Yeah. So we're in her office getting coffee and every day she's like, I'm crying, breaking down. She's giving me a hug. Like, 
I'll never forget two things she did for me. One of them was I was crying one day and then she's come and she's got me in the office and she's gone, suck it up. And I've gone, what? She's gone, suck it up. This is the life you wanted. This is the life you and Gary created for yourself. Now it's happened, suck it up. What do you want? You're down here crying every second. And then I went to myself. At first I'm like, cheeky, but I went to myself for thought, no, she's right. 100%. 100%. And then um, she took me out from jails, going to schools, you know, talking about my story and helping kids. And this one girl, I never forget when, she was only about 10, 9, 10, 11, she went, you know, it's your fault Gary's died. And then obviously I'm straight away, I'm like, what, what, what do you mean? I was in jail, I didn't do nothing what they had to do. She went, no, calm down, let me finish. And she just articulated so she went, Gary knew when you come out, you're gonna do this same thing again. He always knew you was always gonna be there. If you would have took one of your free basketball opportunities, maybe you, you could have got in my house or changed the circumstances. And when I went back to the cell, I remember crying, thinking, yo, I've been blaming the government, I've been blaming the police, I've been blaming my mum and dad, but yo, we ran a gang. I can't, yeah, can't blame anyone apart from myself. Man. Yeah, and my mum said a year before he died, before I went to prison, I remember forgetting, she said, you two, because you're know, like, it's my mum, my mum's a ride or die, she ain't ever going to snitch on the kids like she's a proper mum, like in that sense. And she was like, enough times we've like, loaded up guns in front of her, we've gone and ran in front of like run past the gun in the garden, picked a gun from under the wheelie bin and got off and she's seen us. And mm -hmm. um, So one day we were talking before I got locked up, the last time, i never forget, she went, carry on, what if he's gonna end up dead? And she said it serious, and me and Gary just turned around and went, yeah, we're gonna ride this until the wheels fall off. I swear the engine fell out, <laughs> the wheels fell off. And it took that for me to go and get a job and turn my life around when Gary used to say, cause sometimes we'll catch a man in our ends trying to get through to my side. And this kid, he might talk to people we don't like, but he's not a gangster. Mm -hmm. And this guy's gone white, he's got three guys he's caught him in the alley, 45 or nine, to his head, man, what a kill him. And you know, you've always got one of them jackasses who are there when I've gone, I'll allow it. Nah, fuck that. Yo, yeah, rare, rare, rare. And you just think, you're not even a bad man, shut up. <laughs> so I'm like, yo, bro, walk on, walk on. So me and Gary be going out heads now, like, yo, you're always doing that. You've got too much of a good heart, man. You need to get a job. This ain't for you. And I always say to kids, that's what gets me. I waited for him to die to you create my own company, that. turn it around when I could have did that and probably got him out of it. Mm -hmm. But that's something I've got to eat up. And it does get to me, but. It was written, isn't it? That's yeah, it was written. It had to, be, you know? it had to go that way because if he wouldn't have. I promise you now we'd all be in jail or dead because he had a plan and there was at least three, four people he was going to kill. Where did he die? Um, Old Trafford. So they went to rob this weed place, my dad's friend's house. It went wrong. They said this old man stabbed my brother. It weren't the old man, it was my dad. Stabbed him, stabbed me other brother, left him to die. Um, what got to me is like how all these black people watched my brother die. And this is from people from the scene, so I already know they left him to die. But an old white lady dragged him off the street and put him on a nice little garden bed. A white guy who did 12 hours on the train track stopped and gave him mouth to mouth CPR and stayed with him while he died. Now, my little brother had to get off because he got stabbed. The other brother ran off and my other brother ran off, like dropped him and ran off because he didn't want to go to jail. And I always think, you left my brother to die. Did he have a message for his kids, for my mum, for me? Like, and that taught me, that whole situation taught me, black, white, Asian, doesn't mean a thing because black power, George Floyd, what a load of crap. You all watched my brother die. A white, two white people helped him. So that showed me color doesn't mean a thing. If you've got a good heart and a good soul, that's what matters. All this color and religion, it's just a barrier. So that taught me, where is black pride? Black pride is in the, the, the individual. It's not as a race, you know, because mm -hmm. Asian people have helped me out. Different people, black people have helped me out. But that, in that state, that just showed me that what my mum taught me and my nana taught me is crap. White people ain't the enemy. The enemy is anybody who's not got a good heart, who's not with God. Exactly. So, yeah, you get good people, yeah, black, good white, people. Asian, everything. Yeah. And you get bad people. You get black, bad people, Asian, yeah. yeah. But just the fact that, I get it. Some people, like, will run off. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have run off his baby mother, who's known us since we were young kids. The girl I was with at the time, even both said, How Matthew, what I ran. Gary had two, a little boy and a little girl. They're both doing great now. What year was this? 2011, July. It's been a while now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very deep, and that was been traumatic for the whole family, isn't it? Yeah, but at that time, I'm not really thinking about my family. I'm thinking about yo. This is this is like everyone's got their own relationship, but this is the only thing that I had as love in my family. Yeah, Kyle, my little brother, he was how old is he? 18 at the time. Yeah, he was around 18. So <coughs> we're close, but me and Gary are just inseparable, and now he's gone. So I didn't really care about other people's trauma. I'm trying to get through my trauma. Because my brothers, like my brother JJ and Kyle, they're close in age five years, so they've got a bond. Okay. Where me was just, I'm not lying, me and Gary did everything. I had other friends, but it was just me and Gary. So when Gary died, I don't really have friends to go and connect with. 
I have gang members, but I don't want you, you're not Gary. Mm. You know, you, you you understand my pain, but you're just not Gary. My other brothers, you're not Gary. You don't understand, like me and Gary understand how each other think. Two years apart, same school, same bedrooms, had his hand-me-down clothes. Do you remember the Wildcat bikes in the 80s? You pressed a little black button and it makes noises, a little black kind of BMX. It was a Wildcat, it had a little screen on the front, you press it, it makes noise. Oh, the thing, the, yeah. Yeah, the screen in the front, yeah. yeah he yeah, had yeah. one of them, I had his hand-me-down BMX and then I had his hand-me-down Wildcat yeah, bike, yeah, so we did everything, same yeah, gang, yeah. smoking weed. There was a two-year gap between Yeah, two-year gap, it? yeah. You know, um, do you think if it was an enemy who had killed him, yeah. in, the, in the, the other neighbourhood, yeah. do you think it would have been harder for you to move forward and let it go? No, if it were, I always thank God. People can take this how they want, but people who know me know I would never say anything bad about Gary. The truth is just the truth. I used to say to my brother Kyle, sometimes before I change my life around, I wish it was a gang member because gang members have like 30, 20 gang members. I could easily take one, two of yours. Well, because the way it happened and the guy was defending himself, how can I go and harm someone who's defending his house? Mm -hmm. And it's my brother. I love my brother. I swear, I love him more than life itself. But if my brothers what I did, what they did they were that doing day. doing a robbery, right? Yeah, they were doing a robbery. To get weed. To get weed and money. So if they were around in your house, they would still be alive. So I can't be angry at you the guy whose house it was, forget my dad, never speak to him again. But I can't be mad at you that they ran in your house and you're protecting your family who might be upstairs or whatever. Mm -hmm. I can't be mad because someone runs in my flat and I've got my daughter in there. I'm telling you now on camera, I will kill you stone dead before you can get past me to get to my daughter. So I can't be mad at him. I can't be mad at anybody protecting the family. And you know, like, is your dad. So the, the only thing you could do is not talk to him, just keep him moving. So I could have killed him, but God says, honor your parents. And after all this, I'm trying to get to heaven. I've been hell. It's another story. I've been like physical, like down there, dark hell. My spirit left my body. That's another story. Yeah, but... you know, you've, you've seen like, you, you've seen that the worst of the worst in it. So you know how dark it is down there. Isn't it? So that's, and that's a never ending cycle. It's never ending, bro. You're not coming out of hell, man. There's always going to be another enemy. Yeah. There's always going to be another beef. You know what? I ain't going to lie, be real. Because when I first got out, what would Gary do? I was crying some days thinking Gary would want me to get revenge. And I'm proper in the car, like, so I'll go and get a gun and go and do it. And then I'm like, Matthew, be real. You don't want to get revenge. You don't want to do none of this. Mm. Now Gary's dead. What do you want to do? And it took me about six months, like, what does Matthew like? Because I'm so used to making Gary happy. Mm. What do I like? And then I figured out that and then I had my daughter. And when I held my daughter, I remember thinking, if I go to jail for revenge and you get raped and or anything happens like that to you, I'd kill myself. So it's best I let all that go, put it in God's hands and just be here for you. And I always tell my daughter, you saved me. When I held you, you saved me because I wasn't really a good dad to my sons. Don't get me wrong, they had money. And sometimes I would see them, but they lived in Stafford. So I'm more worried about the gang because I didn't mm. know how to be a dad. My dad didn't teach me because my dad was a, wasn't even a dad. He was a sperm donor. So I'm trying to be a dad off. You had no real relationship with no, them? No, no, no. Like, it used to come and take me for a drive, but no birthday presents, didn't come to no basketball, flipping. When I wanted shoes, trainers to go, it was, say it was eight o'clock, I had to be in Bolton to play training for England. And this man told me to walk from Rushroom to my side to his house. It would have took me about 30, 45 minutes. I would have missed the bus. I just didn't go, I hung up the phone. But then Gary was out trying to get money to get me trainers. Mm. So... Was your dad on the road? Yeah, yeah, he was a road man. I remember he was a part of the, um, the Champagne Posse. So that's in the 80s where they had dough and the 90s where they had Jamaican dough. Jamaican ties. Yeah, oh, champagne, champagne posse. There's now me and my brother laugh like jackass about champagne posse. You, 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 you're you dressing up in designer clothes and buying champagne, but you're flipping kids around home with your baby mother broke. Just to clarify, Gary wasn't his son though, was it? No. Yeah, just clarify that. For the viewers, that's a very traumatic story, you know that? Like even when I was listening now, I was kind of like, you know, wow, this is, the effects on that could like, Destroy people, bro. You know, if you're weak minded, yeah, 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 hard yeah, to get yeah, over yeah. that, man. But you, you know, you've managed to straighten yourself out. And I think one of the big issues is, you know, sometimes when people face trauma on the road, they substitute with drugs and alcohol. And anyone who has seen that, it's a downward spiral. You're gonna, it's gonna go out of control at some point because you can't, you can't self medicate. But a lot of people will come on your podcast and lie and. Um, don't want to take self accountability. Mm. I tell the truth because no one can't come back at me and say this didn't happen or you didn't yeah. you didn't say that. Like I've got kids who who are not mine. I've grew them up, and I've been a great dad because I've seen how my dad course, was yeah, to yeah. me and my brother. Um, and parents, I've got a big part of how your kids' 100%. mental percent played. If I said to my mum, and it's the truth. Look at me, my mum in a good place now. I love my mum because that's the only parent I've ever, ever always had. If you would have came to one game though, mum, I would have took the basketball. When you, when I turn around and see no person representing me there, 
and at half time when obviously you're calling your son over and all the parents are calling their kids over and you're all drinking water and I'm stood here so it nearly makes me cry it was always a dad or a mum would say oh Matthew do you want a bottle of water mm. and I'd go over but I'd feel a part of that group mm. but then at the end you're all getting in car and you're beeping oh good game Matthew and your son's like well I'll see you at school tomorrow we look at little things like Lewis Hamilton yeah 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 his dad the he only got where he got to because of the position his dad played, isn't it? It was very important. I, bro, my daughter's a footballer and she gets called the best keeper in the, the league. She's great, but she does it because I'm there. So when she does a save, she looks at me and I'm like, yeah, that's how it is. Yeah. Great save, Aneo. And I love her that much. I'm a coach of her under 11s team. So I want to be a hands on and be a part of everything she does because I understand the part and of when kids see the parents there. Kids do it to make you proud. Yeah, but I think, you know, people coming from the black and Asian community in that era yeah, yeah. did not understand that, you know, like that to encourage the kids, you know? No, I think it was a cop-out. I think in the 80s and 90s, I think the mums was too much after the dads. My mum was running... The, you think about how many women dads were bad dads, but the mums still had time for the dads, the baby fathers, letting them come in the house, cooking for them. No one's got kids and women on road. Not doing nothing for your kids. The mum's doing everything, buying school trainers, but you still entertain this man. So I'm not saying that like, parents didn't love the kids, but this our generation, we put the kids before the baby mother before anything. Like my baby mother, she tell you, before I got her, I'm all about the kids. You come second. 100%. Don't ever get that twisted. Where our parents was the man. They wanted the man. You know, it was all about the man. Yeah. And they, they can say I'm talking crap. That was real. If you look at the facts. Yeah, that's a point. You got a point. Hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. And um, don't make some bad parents because. I always think what will, if you look at our parents' life, a lot of them got battered. They were getting battered in the 60s and 70s, kids were getting battered. Most of the parents got abused by the husbands. And, and it was normal. Yeah. Domestic, violence, domestic yeah, yeah, violence. Yeah, 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 normal. yeah. And it's you couldn't ring the police and all that. So yeah. our parents seen that. Our parents went through something similar. We seen it and we were lucky enough and brave enough to, now nah, I don't want that for my kid. I think I'm ever going to burn my kid. My mum burnt me with a light bulb. She beat me with a match when I was six, screaming in my little white fronts, snapped a snooky cue over my head. Do you think I'd ever do that that's, to any of my kids? That's another level of domestic violence. Is that is yeah, but and I used to say, is that love? And that's not love, definitely not. And that, so when I used to argue with people and say, Does my mum love me? And they're like, Yeah, of course your mum does. I said, No, you're saying that because that's what we taught. Mm. Mum, some mums kill the kids, some kids will rob from the mum. Human beings do some weird, some mm. wicked things. I believe my mum loves me. This is just what, how I feel. And she might watch this and think it might be different, but I believe she loved me when Gary passed because now she's got to spend time with me and God does things in a way that you, God's way is best. So when Gary died, I, I come out of prison two to three years before my other two brothers. So it's just me and my mum. And then she got to see how I pulled myself up and then she wasn't even proud of me then. But then when I got my own company and her friends, she used to phone me and say, oh, my friends at work said she's seen you on the news, she's seen you on the radio. I've took her to certain things mm -hmm. I've done. I say now, She's proud of me because she can see, and I, I I see the hurt in her eyes or the regret that the one the, out of all the kids, the one that she treated the worst, has made something out of himself without her help. Maybe she had like trauma from her upbringing and stuff like that as well. Yeah, she did, she did, but it's she, true. It's, she never addressed it at that time either. But how can you treat, how can you treat my three brothers like kings and yeah, me like true. a dog? It's chosen. It's not like all of us got the same treatment. I and she admits yeah. it now. I got the worst treatment, so. But at least she admits it though now. Yeah, well, so that's that. Move forward now. Yeah, well, that's after I've already moved forward. Yeah. Think of it; she admitted it probably a year ago. Forty-one. You've been doing it since I was born. Mm. So last Christmas, where my birthday is Christmas Day, so she says she's coming round to cook for me. So I'm buzzing. I'm telling my daughter, I'm like, yes, I live by myself. You know, I see my daughter whenever, mm. but I'm live by myself. So I'm like, yeah, my mum's gonna come spend time with my mum. You know, have a brandy with her, have a little laugh. Two weeks before, there's a brother that I speak to and I don't speak to. Don't really get on with him. Mm. Um, he's one that um, like. Him and my other brother ran on Gary. Kyle got stabbed, so we had to get off. And I don't hold it against him, but me and him just always clashed heads. And so she said, just, just like two weeks before Christmas, oh yeah, I'm gonna go to your brother's and cook at his house and rare and bring you a plate. So it's your mum. I put the phone on, I phone Kyle, I'll never forget, I was crying. I said, bro, your mum would never ever, ever, ever effing make me cry again. I'm a grown man, 41 in my kitchen crying because she just dropped me like a piece of crap again. How is she gonna go to um, JJ's house and she spends his birthday with him in July, but she's coming to my house in the evening with a plate of food. Bro, I was heartbroken. I saw you shield yourself again and then she, mm. she calls you. I don't want to answer the phone, but it's my mum. And that title mum will allow you to get hurt and hurt and hurt and hurt. Mum, isn't it? Yeah, but what did I see this then? So what does it mean, mum? Because mum, brother, daughter, sister are all titles. 
your mum's supposed to be there for you. I love you. You've grew in her belly for nine months. So to me, titles don't mean nothing. Show me. That yeah, show me. That's true as well. Yeah. You got to show. You yeah. got to show the person. But you? like you're saying, because it's mum, you let her get away with yeah, a lot. Yeah. So I had it out with her, and it was like I'm getting angry. Some, sometimes people feel entitled just by the title. Thank you. So yeah. You're, like you're somebody's um brother, for example. Yeah, yeah. Like your your cousin, you got to like play a certain position. No, you don't have to play that position. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And whatever, whatnot. So you got to show love and loyalty. Yes, there you, you go. Know what see, I mean? like you can't just. Constantly just use the person. There you go. You know, there whatever, you go. Whatnot. So you know, I know what we're good. Um, so you know now, obviously you have moved on with your life. We're gonna get into exactly what you do. But yeah, before yeah. we get into that part of it, I want to know. You see your old enemies. Yeah. Like, is it all squashed? Do you reckon? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been out of the gang since 2011, July 27. I was in jail with some of them, and then when I got out, I've just said it to all of them. Listen. I'm out of it, my brothers are out of it. If you've got a problem with any of my brothers, if they've done something to you, like when they get out, if they've done something to you, phone my phone. If they've robbed you, they pay you back. I'm with interest. If you've got a problem, phone my phone, we will rectify it. And this is the exact words. Before my mum buries another son and I hear my mum cry, I will wipe your whole bloodline out and I will go sit in hell for what I'm supposed to do. I will not hear my mum cry like that again. And yet, yeah, it was our doing, but if I'm telling you I'm out of it, leave me and my brothers alone. I will do this if you do this and then you are, you already know what I'm capable of and you want to push a lion and see what a lion does. Mm -hmm. And no, I'm not saying everyone, people respected me that, yo, him and his brother were like that. They did the thing when he was out, his brothers died, he told us this, he's left it. They Definitely. didn't see me in clubs partying. I went and got a normal job cleaning cars and delivering cars. And that was it, I was chilling with my kids. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we're all good. I see, I, see, I see most of him like when I'm driving through my side or my brother, um, Kyle love him to death he used to go clubs don't go no more and he used to see quite a few of him and they'd be like oh yo when they first got to New York G and Skelly's brother oh yo them man were on their thing yo tell him I said safe and I'm, it's a respect if it's not fair it's a respect we did what we used to how people look at as you know in the gang life is them brothers from over there they did their thing they did it proper they've come out they've left it alone, left it alone yeah. he's not trying to talk to people in schools but then mm. at night time he's got a ballet on coming from my night I'm like he's proper left it alone done. You, yeah. you walked away from it yeah you, walked it? away yes and you know what the thing is well, obviously a lot of them are older now as well yeah 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 yeah. they're probably some of them they might not have changed but they're wiser yeah yeah and yeah they yeah, know yeah, that yeah. life was nonsense really because yeah. I know people even who are still drug dealers yeah 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 yeah. And they know it's messed up now yeah yeah yeah, you know, yeah. at 21 you, you didn't think it was messed yeah, up yeah yeah now they know it's messed up yeah. you know it's there so I say any drug dealer who's on road and you're 40, 45, 50 you know this is messed up <laughs> who's there like, this is crazy what you're doing but like, some of them are, they know at least they know it now yeah the first step you know, like they say like a alcoholic can never get clean until he accepts it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So at least they accept it now, isn't it? So, you, so you just kind of, you got, it's building blocks, isn't it? You understand what I mean? No, it's true, because I know people who are like 35, 40, and they're still selling like, no, I'm like, see what you're on? Yeah, just shot in a bit of budgie thing. Man, we're doing that in the 15, 20. You're 40, you're still selling three fives and quarters. Like, you're not even moving to kilos. Like, get a job. Yeah, that's a get a job but I get it the, pers the persona I'm still uh, on roll but when I say to man any big woman like not the little skets who go and get your lips done and want a drug mm. dealer a real woman who wants something to bring something to the table like love loyalty honesty I speak to different like teachers social workers they don't want a guy with his pants halfway down his ass and you're 40 and you sell drugs what do you mean that age, no. no when we they go on a date what you talking about or what do you do for work I'm a chemist yeah chemist. yeah <laughs> <laughs> might be watching too much Breaking Bad <laughs> Well, see, well done. So now, what do you do now? You go, you go to schools and stuff. How's that like? So I got my own company called One Message and I um, started it in 2016. So I go to schools, do assemblies. And through the assemblies where me and the teachers and Michelle, who works for me, we identify the kids that are probably as bold, are going down the wrong path, going into gangs. And we make an intervention plan. Work with that kids over 12 weeks to six months. So I'd get him into football, get him into whatever sports he likes, but I pay for it. Because a lot of kids what make bad choices I'm not saying all, oh, but a lot of them have single mothers. And some of the mums are damn good mums, but the price of um, living costs and everything's gone up. They can only do the basics. So I pay for the football equipment. I pay for the football sessions or whatever it is. We go for food after it. We build that big brother, little brother bond or big brother, little sister bond. They can get all of me on Insta, Snapchat, because it's, it's public because I've got my business. And it's just being there for them. So at Friday, six o'clock, social services and all that shit. A kid's got a dilemma. They can't wait till Monday till you open. They can just get all the math for you. And I'm like, yo, big bro, slow down. What's going on? 
Think of this. Think of that. You're going to make your own decision, but this is just what you could do to avoid it. And if you treat a young person with respect and love and show them that they are cared for, you'll see this, the changes slowly. But if you're just going there for a job, the kids know you're just there for a job. You don't care. Why I get results? Because I care. I was that kid. He was that kid. So yeah. I know what it takes to get to that kid. And what you've lost, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, you lost family members and you've got yeah. a bullet inside you still to know. But I know what I say to them, no excuses, get the job done. And like, what do you mean? I'm like, I used to say that. So one long story short, there was a kid, he had a bad life and he was at this home and um, he's talking to the the, the, the the women in the home, bad. So I said, come in, he's come in. And he's like, rare, 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 kick him. So I let him have, there's two women, he's like, you're going on to your good life and rare. I said, bro, bro, how do you know she's not going home and getting knocked out by her husband? How do you know she's going home and got no food in the fridge? Just cause she's here and smiling, that's their job. Mm. And he's going on, yeah, but my mum, so I just went, you know what, boo hoo. Boo-hoo, your mum's partner threw you down the stairs. Boo-hoo, that this has happened to you. Boo-hoo, my dad killed my, my brother. Boo-hoo, my mum burnt me. Guess what? How many people actually care? And he went, not a lot. I went, these adults, you take me and these two women out of your life who care about you and love you. How many adults actually care about you? He started crying and said, none. I said, and you're going to talk to us like this. Even though we love you, we've got a limit that we're going to take before we walk away. So you really need to be careful what you're doing and who you're talking to and how you talk to us because not everyone's life's gravy. My life, yeah, it's good. But it's, I've got a brother and a sister and two brothers and a sister I'm never going to get back. I have to see my mum sometimes with pain in her eyes. Like, it's not all what you think. You just have to push through it and get on. Mm -hmm. And he cried and he, he apologised and said, so I tell kids no excuse because you've got kids in Pakistan, India, Africa, you know, the, the parts of it were still filled world. And you see them you see them on documentaries, praising God, praying, going to church, going got to the nothing. temple. Got nothing. So who are we with the Samaritans line and all the mm -hmm. help you can get in Britain? And you can go for a walk around the block to kill your head. These mm -hmm. kids ain't got nothing. They've seen famine. They've seen their family get murdered and raped, but yeah. they are still trying to go screen and be somebody. So no excuse. Let's get it done. Yeah, we, you know, it is sometimes we don't appreciate yeah. what we got, you know. And it, it's about the problems here, especially in in Western countries. Yeah, yeah. The gangster life is 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 kind of idolized. Yes, yes, it is. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Kids growing up thinking that this is the way to be, but. Look, you've been there, lived it. Yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean, like I said, your city's got a book about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The gunplay yeah. and whatever, whatnot. Yeah. It, it was no doubt. It was serious, you know. And but you could sit here today and know, like, look, that is nonsense. You would never. Would you go back and live that life again? No, no. I would have. I would have went the NBA route. Took my scholarship. Got a quarter of a million pound. I knew I would have made it in the NBA. But even if I didn't make it, I would have came back with a quarter of a million. Right, mum, let's get a house in Altrincham, sale a nice part of Manchester, or even out of Manchester. The story would have been different, different yeah. but I would have been a selfish millionaire or I wouldn't have been helping kids. This way it happened and me giving my life to God, God's, God's opened the door and people say, oh, um, your life was already planned out. I'm like, nah, because that means you've got no free will. We've all got free will. So the Definitely. choices I choose has got me to this part in life. There were times I was broke in my company and it's just starting and I don't know where my next contract's coming from and you have that little devil for should I get some bud and do it? Should I, just be, should I just be the middleman? Get it from you, for you, from him, and just be the put a little drink on. I'm like, nah, my brother died. I promised God I wouldn't do it. And just because I'm struggling now, that's going to be set me back. And then I always that's, say to kids. That's 10 steps backwards. Yeah. And the kids go, what makes you carry on? I'm like, you kids. I said, if I got caught selling weed, or just say something. It was on the news and everything because I make a big deal out of it. How would you feel? Not they all say let down that you were lying. I'm like, see? So you being fake, you being fake. So I've got to live what I'm trying to tell you to live. Mm, yeah, it's true, man. But then a hundred percent, if you can't, there's something. You even the temptation comes, you just got to like think like how far you've come. Yeah, 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 you yeah, 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 I mean? yeah. That is literally ten steps back. Yeah. I never understood people who leave road and then go back to like why did you leave in the first place? You just stayed because they really they really think they want it, but when they see right, I'm not making a grand a day. Mm. I can't just go and buy Jesus Giuseppe boots. Now, what do you mean? I've, I'm only getting three hundred pound a week. You know, I used to make that in a call, two cars. What do you mean? The nice girls in the club, the ten tens in the club, don't want me. I'm getting a woman who's got a bit of stretch marks and a little belly. I'm getting a proper school mum, you know, a soccer mum. But a soccer mum's going to be with you. Yeah, the ten ten weird. girls. As soon as you cut afford Giuseppe's or take her to Dubai, they want the next guy that's going to do that. Damn. So that's it. We get to the hard bit. Tough, hard times don't laugh. I mean, tough times don't laugh. Tough people do. So I always tell guys that tough men will last. Tough times don't, because times go up and down. Mm. But if you're tough through it, you'll get through it. We live in like very materialistic times, isn't it? Yeah. So it's like people don't really care about 
emotion on that. Yeah. Like, it's just like, <laughs> what's in front of you? You know, like, you know, so, so, like social media has made things a million times worse. No, it is because I was speaking to this woman the other day and I went, you know what? She said to her, I said, that's why men are scared to commit to women. Men are scared to be vulnerable and show our emotional sides because you use it against us. 100%. 100%. 100, bro. Or, and I find that evil though, you know. It's, it is evil because, like I said, it's materialistic. Will so if mm -hmm. you ain't got the design, the trainers, if you're not, you know, because with Joe, people putting up these flash, these holidays. Yeah, me and my brother laugh, and some of them we know. They go back, you know, you're living check to check, and you've just spent how much in Dubai to go on Instagram to live that life. But really, you having, you don't own your car, you don't own your house, and you're living paycheck to paycheck. So they're taking yourself somewhere in Europe. You've gone to this big expensive holiday and now there's nothing in your fridge. That's crazy. But everyone's going to like it. And some people, have you noticed like when you might put up a post and it's a nice positive post and you might get the same 50 likes, but you've got like a thousand followers, yeah. but you get 300, 500 views. I like to say people, look how many people looked and won't even just press a love. love. <laughs> and they might even think it's nice, but nice, hating yeah. it, you know, it's crazy. And the thing is, if you act like an idiot, yeah, they'll, yeah. they'll actually <laughs> like that. Say, it's crazy, isn't it? Oh, one thing that gets me is this, in this generation is the attention that, not all, so don't no one bash me in the comments, that some of the women do, like when you go on Instagram and you've got grown ass women twerking in the kitchen, you think. That's, that's crazy. And man. you think men want a woman that does that real talk. But I think like, when they look back in 20 years time and that video is still on Instagram, <laughs> I think that's, they might have a different view of it, you know? Uh, you know, 60 years old, looking back. I know, what's the shame Your grandkids to see it. Said, no, now they're twerking. Imagine, that's your grandma at school. <laughs> like, you know, that's your grandma twerking. That'd be mad, isn't it? Like, you know, people, uh, people don't think about that. Whatever it's you, true. Whatever you put out on the internet. Is it's good. there for life. It's there for life, bro. Me and my brother joking, my mum and saying, we best not catch you on no internet. Boy, shut your mouth like you're catching me. I'm just letting you know, innit? What I see my mum about, yo, this is your mum twerking. Like, my mum would never do nothing like that. She's got too much respect, but the women on there, so stop being bashing us men for not committing when you gotta give us something to commit um you know just to finish it off obviously i think rightly so yeah um the, of the day today yeah just to finish it off you know it's been a great podcast and i want to get you to leave a message for the youngsters but before yeah. we do I wanna, yeah i just want to touch on one thing you know the protests that's going around the country yeah man. obviously you've come from manchester so yeah. some stuff kicked off over there yeah. whatever and it's just sad to see what's going on you know yeah and the hate that's being portrayed based upon lies yeah, yeah, you know yeah. and I can't believe like, how much tension is within the UK right now yeah and the crazy thing is we live good compared to the third, third world yeah 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 but yet people are taking like they're saying that people are taking their jobs nobody's taking your job nothing and it's just kind of like I don't know man it's just like I think to myself man should I just leave but you know what, the, the the news play a part of it, because that's what they show you. But they don't they won't go around communities in London where you're like we were saying before, you're all together, black, Asians, Libyans, whatever, you're all together. Mm. They won't show that. And the idiots little, like you were saying before, the idiots that are smashing the windows and looting, it's not every white person, because yeah. like you seen in the protest, a lot of white people going against them idiots. 100%. What are you doing to ask our country, our city? Like, yeah, protest. Anyone can protest, but don't be smashing up shops and... You're talking about a lot of them before that would have been saying, I'm a nice guy, I'm a nice this, but you're trying to burn down a hotel where the immigrants mm. are and they've got kids and women in there. Like, now, let, now imagine if that roles were reverse. Immigrants were coming and setting the Hilton on fire and the Premier Inns. Mm. I'm sure the British public would be outraged. You know, I saw this uh, uh, like a protest in Nottingham and there was hundreds of white people. So when the cameras, the cameras were moving, right? Yeah, yeah. And I thought it was the EDL. Yeah, yeah. But it was actually a counter march. Yeah, yeah. Against the EDL. Yeah, yeah. And whatever. And I was happy because well, I was like, oh, I, that made me happy seeing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one thing I noticed about like, you know, like, you know the EDL and um, the far right. Yeah. It's like a spent force. Yeah, 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 when, yeah. When yeah. I first noticed it, this is the first time I noticed it was, I mean, when they had their march in London, I mean, Trafalgar Square. And so they said that there was 100,000 people. Yeah. I was like, you can't fit 100,000 people in there. <laughs> so I went on to Google yeah. and looked up, you know, you got them uh, sites that tell you how much play people you could fit in, like yeah, Old yeah, Trafford yeah. and whatever, whatnot, and you can't fit more than 35,000 in, in Trafalgar Square. Okay. So I was like, okay, you're lying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number one, but then when I was looking at the crowd, there was like a massive portion, I said 90% was over 40. Yeah, 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 and yeah. The old school racists yeah, yeah. still <laughs> trying to hold on, you know? Still trying to hold on. So I was like, you've got kind of done, man, you know? So then I, you know, I'm a man who assesses. Yeah, yeah. I, I assess danger. Yeah, yeah. Because of the life we lived. Yeah, yeah. I respect danger. Yeah, yeah. So I assess, you know? Yeah. So I was looking at 
the protest, you know, where Middlesbrough, Sunderland. Yeah. I was like, all this hate you try to create, you know, you try to get people to mobilise and whatever. Yeah. The best you really did was get about five, six hundred people to mess about in Sunderland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another two, three hundred in a whole. Like, yeah, yeah. That's, England's got like 60, 70 million people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like a, not even a, a grain, not, yeah, yeah. A grain in, the, in the ocean, you know, it was there. So I said, really, that kind of goes to show. Obviously, being violent was going to hit the headlines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but I said, really, the people are not with you. But the people are not supporting you. Just know what I mean. But the news didn't show that, did they? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's just uh, you know, and it's, it, because is uh, it just looks news worthy because it's in a yeah, 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 yeah. You watch yeah. it, but when you actually break it down, like you didn't see tens of thousands of people. No, going did you? Crazy. Act? You saw five hundred here, hundred there, sixty there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, that's like you He's are a dying out. Yeah, you are dying yeah, yeah. out. You know, you're always going to be there to a certain extent. But you don't have that mass support. Because you think of the young generation, like the, I don't know, say 30s to 26. <laughs> gone, um, England is so diverse. They've all grew, gone college. They've gone to school with Asian, white mates, mm. black mates. So they're looking like, mm, what are you doing? Yeah, exactly. like, what are you doing? My, my Asian mates here with me, counter-protesting you. Mm. It's well, not... And that's exactly yeah. what it is, yeah. Because especially in places down in the big cities, yeah. like London, Manchester, Birmingham, Everyone grew up with each other. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand what I mean? So if you look at a lot of these areas where they brought out five, six hundred, yeah. they're very, very small. There's a very small minority. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? And whatever. So what exactly are you protesting against? There you go. Because there's no one even there. But so, you, you, you're doing it in the town centre. How come none of you didn't go to Tottenham, yeah, Hackney, yeah, Moss Side, they're not, they're not, not to 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 talk stiff. They're not going to do that because the community ain't going to stand for it. You think you're going to come and mash up our businesses and terrify our children? You can do it in the town centre because the police yeah, were there. Exactly, you're smashing yeah. up all these big corporations. They're going to fix it. Look at Liverpool. The 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 local community came out yes. and protected the mosque. There you go. See, you know, and they said, "No, you ain't coming there." There you go. You know what I find really sad? You know, the, you know the lies they tell about illegal immigrants. Or well, they call them illegal. Yeah, 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 use, yeah. Let's just use that word yeah, for, yeah. you know, because that's a common word. So if you really look at these people's situation, who wants to leave their homeland? Number one. No one. No one wants to leave their homeland. You're leaving because you've got no choice. You've got no choice. Number that's the that's the first thing. The second thing is is this if you kind of look at facts and, and status, I see a I see a white brother on LBC as I was driving down to come check you. Yeah. He was saying he's, he was he owned a company. He's saying migrant work workers are the hardest workers yeah. I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have yeah. a different type of work ethic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Of course, in every bunch, you're going to find criminals and, you know, f every yeah, culture yeah, has yeah, that. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. You're going to get the criminals, but it's the minority. And with these guys, I think to myself, some of them can't speak English. Yeah, yeah. I remember, the, and they, they make this false narrative, oh, these guys are military-aged men invading. Oh, shut up. They're invading nothing. I said, and number two, the thing is, well, remember, because they come, they come in and try to make money. Yes, yes. And bring their families here. Yeah, so a better living. I mean? Yeah, exactly. Because they might have just about enough money to get one man here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He works. He sends for the wife and kids. You understand what I mean? So all the narratives are based upon lies and stuff like that. And the biggest thing is, which is is undeniable, some of these refugees, where are they coming from? Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Iraq. And what do they all have in common? At some point in recent history. You've bombed the shit out of them. <laughs> that's the fact. That's true. Yes, yeah, facts. It. That's facts. So, like, if today, let's say you got a thousand migr migrants trying to get in, yeah. you know, through Dover, or whatever, and they come from Iraq, can we blame them? Because we saw the lies you told to bomb that country. We saw it. Mass weapons. Mass weapons. Yeah, yeah, mass, mass, destruction, yeah. Weapon, mass, mass destruction. So, we see that. And if they can you blame them now? The no. country's destroyed. There's no jobs there. Nothing. You mash the infrastructure. Do you understand what I mean? So it's like understand this is not a straightforward issue yeah that's what i mean and trust me if you look at some of these people from our uh generation yeah. our parents sorry a lot of the migrants that came from the the, uh, the west indies the caribbean and asia they were invited here to re rebuild the country yes that's what i mean but if you look at them they still love they still love the homeland yeah 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 yeah, like, yeah, yeah they're yeah. still attached to it you know what i mean and if they didn't have we now obviously all kids here, grandkids, yeah, 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 yeah. great grandkids. They kind of stuck, yeah, but yeah. They still want to go back. home. It was there that like we want to go back, <coughs> but because the whole family's here now, it's a bit that different way of life to know. Cause, yeah, because the reality is, no one likes leaving their home, bro. It was there. That, know what? Everyone watching that was a great point. I just thought I never thought of it like that. How many British people 
when the, the ones well people that say you know you're in our country taking our jobs you want to come over here but how many British try and go and buy houses in Spain Benidorm you're trying to migrate to somewhere else and how many of them how many of them have you seen learn Spanish none none but then get angry that the Spanish people don't want you there it's the same thing you are doing to the immigrants over here exactly yeah. everyone should be having a, a, a peaceful life everyone should be safe everyone should be a, um, able to um, fend for the family provide for the family and like I said everyone should just get along whether you're Muslim um, Christian whether you're black white whether you're immigrant whether you're you're over here everyone just needs to get together because you know what you get stabbed I get stabbed we're both going to bleed you we both breathe oxygen we're both we're all just the same there's just no one should discriminate but that's what the media want to show but guarantee if you did a fact on how many British people live in Spain there's loads mm. there's loads you're not Spanish you're British and like you said have you gone over there to try and learn no you've gone over there brought your property with your nose up because you can afford it they've let you in it's double standards yeah you know what I really kind of what really makes me sick is any time a migrant or person of colour does a does, does a crime yeah 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 they highlight it yeah, yeah. amplify it you know <laughs> like this is what the whole whole community is doing yeah, yeah. but then you know you get that Lucy Letterby kill seven kids yeah Derek, yeah yeah, yeah. Bird kill, kill 12 kids like serial killer after serial killer after serial killer but then you don't care when they're white it just makes no sense, and like I said, it's, di- it's a disgusting tactic. It is to try to use, you know, because it's not sincere. Like when, for example, Derek Bird went and shot twelve people, wherever was it, Brighton or somewhere. Yeah, but we didn't care if he was white. White, or we just cared that you killed twelve yeah, people. It didn't make a difference, you know. what I mean, when Lucy let me kill seven kids in the hospital. Yeah, yeah, we just care that you kill kids. Care. We yeah, don't care what color you are. Exactly. The, yeah, and that's and they amplify these things. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. But it's deep. But before we go, bro, I want you to leave a message with you know the youngsters yeah. you know and give them some advice so any youngster that wants to get into a gang look at my story there's stories where people have not even made it out if you've got a mum you've got someone that loves you talk to them if you're good at sports tap into it look at your friends crime doesn't pay so if any of your friends are not telling you to go and do the right thing they're not really your friends you get one life and we all think we're going to live to see 80 if you live in the road life it's death injury or jail it's not worth it um, crime doesn't pay you don't care that you're making a little bit of money now legally you can make more money over a lifetime legally over selling drugs it's nice to be a nice person and for the young Asian and black kids out there you have to work twice as hard to be seen as a young white person and that is facts teachers social workers all agree with me that is just the facts of today so why will you like me be an idiot and make it harder for yourself to be seen in a good light when they already might, the powers that be might see you. Oh, just look at how the, the portrayals in, in soaps. EastEnders, I always lose in that one. Patrick, the black guy, yeah, man. Like all oh, Jamaicans talk like that and drink rum and do nothing. All Asians have the corner shop or the post mm-hmm. office. Like black and Asians don't do Spirit heart day. surgery, yeah. Don't, are not lawyers, are not doctors, are not pilots. So why are you giving them um, ammunition to make us look a way that we're not? So I would say crime doesn't pay. Love your parents, find God and just be a nice person. And the, the road thing is dead. Because as you see, when you go to jail, ain't no one going to be there for you. A man will shout you out on one drill song, but two years later, man are trying to get with your girl. Man ain't thinking about you doing 35 years. Now you're indispensable, now you're gone. One life, live it positively. Man, that was some great advice to finish with, guys. And you know what, thank you for listening, I appreciate it. And like I said, man, this platform here, we just try to bring on guys who are, who are real, who live, live that life and they know the dangers and the trauma of that life. Anyway, guys, I'll be back soon. Peace. Guys, today's podcast is in partnership with Stone & Co. solicitors, experts in serious and complex criminal matters. If you have a criminal matter that you need help with or you've been arrested and want the best representation, contact the number below or drop them an email. All the information is on the screen below, as you can see. Stone & Co. can offer specialist criminal defence services on a private basis or legal aid so you don't pay nothing and as a promotion offer they're offering a case review in person or over the phone free of charge no obligation no fees and they'll take a look at your case guys